did? What the fuck's going on? I don't know. You don't know? No. Everyone has chlamydia. <sighs> I get off a plane and all I see is everyone has fucking chlamydia. Everybody has chlamydia. Apparently. I don't have chlamydia. You sure? Yeah. You get tested today? No, I didn't. You might have chlamydia then. Oh my God. I got tested. I've, been, I've only shot one scene in October. Oh, you haven't gotten laid since October? <laughs> Maybe like once or twice. See? Chlamydia right there. It was like in the talent pool, though, and I trust that person would tell me if they got chlamydia. I trust that person, okay? Well, your trust is obviously misplaced because you obviously have chlamydia. Everyone does. Okay, should I come right now? Yeah. Oh, I have chlamydia. <laughs> You're like, dude. I know you gave me chlamydia. I know <laughs> I know we banged like six months ago, but I know you gave me chlamydia. I know it. According to Twitter, everyone has chlamydia now. I have a pretty good run with that, at least, though, because in my six years, this is my sixth year in porn, and I've only gotten chlamydia once in the industry. I had it when I came in because I was a cam girl. Besides right now, right? Yeah, but it was obvious. No! <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you're not allowed to post this because now everyone thinks like, you're going to get me canceled. For my comeback, you're going to get me canceled. As long as you don't give anyone chlamydia, you're not going to get canceled. I don't have chlamydia right now. <laughs> you were saying the one time in six years. Yeah. That's it? Just the one time? Yeah. I mean, that's a good run. That is. That is. Sorry, I know that came out sarcastic as hell. That's I, it, I, it, it <laughs> is a good run, knock on wood. I don't get chlamydia fucking again. Right. But it's chlamydia and gonorrhea going around. It's not just one of them. It's both. Because, like... Now working in uh, production, I'm like, you know, I've been seeing all this and like I have to rebook all that shit when people get stuff. So at first I thought I was like, okay, maybe it's just me working in production as I'm seeing this more. And then I'm like, no, this is not normal. <laughs> so why do you think it's coming about besides like the whole TTS? For those who don't know, talent testing services and, you know, pass, pass are not in communication right now. The pass system is what the adult entertainment industry uses to like communicate with the whole rest of the industry. Like when someone fucking pops positive since people are saying popping dirty is a not what to call it anymore yes sorry work is texting me so i'm gonna turn this off yay I'm like can you book this girl can we book these girls girls I'm like i don't even know so many people have had their trips canceled too because of it so like i'm just like cold calling the people like hey is this girl still coming i know it's christmas and i know that like la is a walking virus right now but are you still coming to LA and would you like to shoot some porn? Right. <laughs> would you like to risk a bacterial infection in your nethers? Yeah. Just in time for Christmas. You know, right. you, you get to go home and you get to take care of two weeks off anyway. Hey, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh -huh. Go home, bang your you know, civilian significant other for Christmas. Like, happy Christmas, baby. We're going to raw dog. Come yeah. media. <laughs> it's like Santa coming down the pipe. Yeah. I think it. I think it's most, like, definitely has a lot to do with not being reported to pass because then people can't check as much. You have to, like, just rely on someone showing you this and being like, oh, yeah, I trust you. But also I think um, my theory, at least, is that we got a lot of new performers in during COVID, and I think things weren't explained to people as much, like, just, you know, like, regular workings because people weren't working as much. So it's like, hey, if you pop a dirty test you have to tell every single person and there may be some like stigma or shame behind that still where it's like for it's a porno cold yeah yeah exactly so i feel just like people aren't as used to talking about it like may not know the stand i don't know that that's my only explanation see my theory is like people just don't know to talk about it and don't know hey i should probably tell everybody that i've slept with and like no one will get mad at me right if i do it you know because that was like the i don't know that's what i did I don't know. Actually, the girl didn't tell me. I called her and I screamed at her agent. And I was like, bitch, what the fuck? <laughs> You're bragging about all this shit. All these civilians are fucking. And now I have chlamydia. Give me my money for my test. And they were like, no. And I was like, I tried. <laughs> you tried. That's all you can do. I tried. See, my theory is partially it's that with all the new performers. Also, with the amount of OnlyFans content trade that's going down, with the mix in with the new performers. Because it's one thing like, yo, you show up on set. And someone who's in production is like, yo, bro, you have a dirty test. You can't shoot. Yeah. It's a whole other thing when, like, someone's rolling over to your apartment, your hotel room that you guys have booked. And they're like, you're good, right? And like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's just not enough information in general with whoever it be 
new performers, new content creators, all that stuff, just like there needs to be more dialogue about how to do it safely and how to tell people that you have something and like maybe don't go get your antibiotics before you test. That's a big one, I think, because that that's what I've been hearing a lot. Um, is that people suspect, you know, if someone calls them and say, hey, you know, like I worked with someone and I just worked with you and someone else I worked with earlier just got gonorrhea. Um, I think I have it. And so you might have it. You should go figure that out. And then that person, instead of going and getting tested first, they just go to the, the doctor and get a shot in their butt or they get their Z-Pack or whatever. And I'm like, you shouldn't be taking the meds unless you know you have it. I agree. But <laughs> probably people are looking from the financials like, oh, a fresh test is like 200 bucks. No, no, to pee in a cup is 60 bucks. All right. To get your throat swallowed is 60 bucks. A Z pack's like fucking five if you have insurance. Yeah, I know. But still, you're also building up the resistance to that antibiotic in your body. And this is why we have super gonorrhea and super chlamydia. So y'all shouldn't do that. Stop being stupid. Stop being stupid. Whoa, whoa. whoa. You want people to stop being stupid in this industry? <sighs> I'm going to be out of a job. Like, what the hell? You want people to stop? Like, People are going to come on here if they have common sense. What are you doing here? I, I'm not going to just like take Tylenol because I think I might be sick. Like I'm only going to take Tylenol if I like actually have symptoms. though. Right. You know? I'm just going to boof it if I'm fine. <laughs> or at least for when I'm sick. You ever boof Tylenol? No. The gel caps feel amazing as they dissolve. I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. It's a joke. I have never boofed Tylenol. <laughs> I, I, I'd like to... Okay, if you say so. You don't believe me? I don't believe you. <laughs> Why wouldn't you believe me? That's a ridiculous thing to say. Because you just said that the, you just gave me in detail which caps are bad. <laughs> it sounds like you put some research into that. That's all. Yeah, but someone else's asshole, not mine. I don't know if that makes it better. They're consenting. It's fine. Okay. It's for science. <laughs> for science. Yeah. I mean, Anyways, uh, don't take meds unless you know you need them. Right? Yes. Don't boof them either, unless you know that you need them in your butthole. What meds specifically do you need in your butthole? That's not my job to tell people. I don't know what they have. I'm not a doctor. You sure? I'm more of a doctor than half these people who are just taking meds because they think it's fun. I mean, you're the one giving <laughs> medical advice on this show, so. <laughs> you have to put a disclaimer at the bottom. Like, <laughs> that, that is going to be the, like, the neon sign under your name. It's going to be, not a doctor. <laughs> That, that's going to be like the, the title, the subtitles on both of us is like, not a doctor, not a lawyer. <laughs> You're not take financial advice when we also tell you to buy all of our NFTs and crypto. Oh, no, no, no. Do that. <laughs> Join the Patreon. NFTs. Yeah, buy my NFTs. I have a couple. <laughs> you have NFTs. I do. Didn't actually pay to mint them. I just threw them up on OpenSea and literally I took a bunch of like neat neo-noir pictures I went, if someone is willing to buy them, I will take their money. Because otherwise, I think NFTs are kind of a scam. I'm just willing to take my piece of the pie from that scam. Thoughts? None. Oh, I don't believe you there. I don't like NFTs. Well, then you have thoughts. I don't have many thoughts on NFTs because I've never even thought to make an NFT because I'm not trying to profit off a scam. Why not? Because what am I supposed to do with crypto? Turn it into fiat currency? I see. I don't know. I don't have enough time in my day to learn about NFTs. Well, so, I tried to when it was first a thing and I was reading. I'm like, none of this makes sense. It's stupid. I'm not going to do it. Like, I like the theory of NFTs. I like a dig digital signature of ownership of artwork, of digital art. I like that. The problem is, the art is not actually contained in the goddamn blockchain. What Only are you supposed to do? Hey, guys, you want to see this really cool NFT I have? Look at it. Look at, look at my NFT, guys. <laughs> like, well, what? It's one of the, like, like, like... Like, I'd rather buy, like... like I'm a fine artist, too. So I'd rather invest money and have people buy actual art than, like, something that someone can show me on their phone. Cause, like, that's well, but that's the thing. Like, technically, at the point where you own the IP for it, you could make prints of it. You could... Okay, but, or I could just buy, like, a painting from somebody. Well, I've never bought an NFT. I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm not in proponent. Obviously, if you look around my apartment, I've bought some art. Like, okay. not, like, anything crazy, but, you know, I've bought some art. Okay, yeah. I like the idea of 
hey, if you're a digital artist and you're, you know. And you can sell a print. You can go to a print shop and print it. And NFTs are dumb. The end. Okay, next topic. <laughs> like many things, they have value because other people agree that they have value. Not me. <laughs> Not me either. But once again, if people were willing to buy my NFTs, I would happily sell them. I'm willing to profit off of your, you know, desire to whatever, like have an NFT. Who knows? In the grand scheme of things, yeah, no, I wouldn't obviously much rather have a print, a physical print and support an artist that way. Yes. So are you making art in your free time right now? No. Why not? Because I don't have time. Why not? I'm not inspired to make art right now. Well, that's a bummer. Yeah. But I'm not yeah, I'm not just going to make art to make art so I can sell it or whatever. Like, well, I'm not saying for profit for, for you. For you know, Yes, but if I'm not inspired, I'm just going to sit there and be like, hmm. Just been working too much or? Yeah. A lot of work. Why are you working so hard? Because I want something to do with my time. But you could be making art. But I have to have inspiration for it. For work, it's just kind of like, oh, I you know what I have to do when it's not for my own personal gain. I mean, I really hope your work is for your personal gain. It is, but it's not like, oh, like I have to come up with ideas to do stuff. It's just kind of someone's like, hey, I need this girl and this dude in this situation. Can you figure it out? Yeah. And then I can be like, yeah, I can do that. It's a very different muscle versus actually being creative. Yeah. It's like I can call people and yell at them on the phone when they fuck up. That's all. <laughs> do you enjoy that? Sometimes. If I have enough time to, like, fix it, if I don't have enough time to fix it, then there's a problem because then it's my problem. Like, oh, my God, everybody has chlamydia. <laughs> shouldn't have given it to everybody. I don't. You have to cut that out because now everybody's going to think I have chlamydia. No one takes anything I say seriously. Okay. Except you putting gel caps up your butt. I think that is taken pretty seriously. Here. Just by you. I mean, it's just, just as serious as you spitting into people's mouths as they show up on set to say hello. Well, that's how you give everyone chlamydia. You said you haven't gotten laid in months. I just assumed you're just spitting in everyone's mouth. So they show up as a, how you say hello. All right. I feel like nothing I've said on this podcast yet is usable. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start over. What questions do you have? Because this, yeah, I feel like this is not. The show's ridiculous. I, I don't know if anyone warned you. It completely goes off the rails. I don't watch podcasts, so how am I supposed to know that? Ask any of the hundreds of people that have done the show before. I don't know who's done your show. I don't talk to people either. Well, I mean, you mentioned at least two people while we were talking off air that have done the show. They haven't. I guess, yeah, one of them told me about it, but I don't know. I forget what she said. <laughs> she was very, very open during her episode. Yes, yes. No, no. She's great, but. She did not want to play a political game at all. She's just like, here it goes. And I'm, I'm here for it. play all the political games here like, now. Yeah, you need to cut every mention of you saying that everyone has chlamydia. I mean, it's not just you. No. No, you can you can let me say everyone has chlamydia. You can, just can't leave in that you that I have chlamydia because that's a lie. No, it's, it's a... It's slander. It's a comedic exaggeration. It's slander. <laughs> I, ha I would have no way of knowing if you had chlamydia or not. I... Okay, I'm going to go get tested tomorrow. I'm going to go pee in the dumb cup tomorrow and come back. And so then you can't use it in any of your things, otherwise you are slandering me. Uh, I mean, it's not a serious accusation. Not in the least bit. I don't legitimately think you have chlamydia. I don't think any audience member who has half, half, maybe a quarter of a working brain cell believes that I believe you have chlamydia. I just thought it was a funny thing to fucking say because everyone has it. Except for me. Yes. You, you are the lone survivor in the chlamydia zombie apocalypse. Yes. <laughs> because I haven't worked. Why haven't you been working, by the way? Because everybody has chlamydia. Before that. <laughs> uh, COVID. Before that. There was nothing that I wanted to do. And this is where this gets political. And I will tell you happily, but you cannot include this. Well, don't say it then. Like, <laughs> don't give me post work. Like, hey, Matt, here's a here's a story that we just got to cut from the runtime. <laughs> Off the record. No. Yeah, yeah. Keep it sanitized for the record, please. 
You can tell me when we stop recording, but I'd like a sanitized version that I don't have to do post-production work on. Anyway, um, if I do start working on it, everyone has to get throat swabs to work with me (laughs) in like a three-day test because I'm not fucking with that shit. You ever thought about just like shooting your own fucking content where you have control over everything? Or I mean, I do, but I also, the past two and a half years, I've just done solo content on OnlyFans. And if I can make the same pay that people are making doing Boy Girl, right now it's about just like trying to figure out what's best for me and not doing extra work. I'm like, yes, I could shoot Boy Girl content and do all these contacts, do all this stuff, but it would just be stressful for me at the end of the day. You know, so I'm kind of like, okay, like, where's the balance in between it that I can be producing content at my own time and pace and still do other stuff with my life? There's other things in life besides porn? Evidently not, because I'm just spending all my time doing pre-production work. Right. You're like, (laughs) I don't have time to create art because there's just porn. Literally. But yeah, so once I got into production, it did start taking up like doing bookings, now doing pre-production um, is it does take a lot of time and I want to learn that, you know, it's more of a, something that I'm learning how to do and get in with that, um, and see exactly what people want me to do, like what my job exactly is, how much time it'll take up. So then I can start like being like, okay, well, you know, if I'm doing this now and then I have time to do this later kind of stuff, but it's just been, it's been figuring shit out. Doing what's best for me and, you know, maybe if that means stepping back for a little while to focus on other areas of the industry, that's fine. You know, I mean, I'm not losing out on anything. Uh, My Pornhub rank has still been under 300 for the past, (laughs) all the time I haven't been shooting. Only fans. That's just fucking. All the way I mean, good on you for that. That is just fucking wild because, like, I definitely know some performers where it's like, oh, wow, you're actively shooting and you have slipped from, like, 5,000 into like the 10,000 ranges. It's like not, I don't know how much that shit actually fucking matters on the booking front. I think it's like, it's become more of a thing now that free ones isn't a thing anymore. Like I know companies look at Pornhub rankings um, because they make money off posting shit there too. So I think, yeah, it's more of a thing now, but yeah, like when I was shooting me, it was in like the 200s and now it goes in between like 200 to like our back end of 200s. But yeah, like it used to be like 150 to 200. And now it's like 200 to, you know, 270 maybe in there. But yeah. Ain't shabby. Yeah. And, and that I have, I literally have not done shit. I mean, my porn, half year. my porn hub break is in six digits. So. And yeah, I'm like, okay. Like as long as like my only fans keeps making money doing like God knows what. <laughs> um, I'm fine for now. I don't need to do extra and I like being able to be like, okay, wow. Like if I can do this just with like doing that, it does then, you know, I don't, I don't need to do all this extra stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'm just lazy, but it's, I'm trying to maximize my. You definitely don't sound lazy. Base and peace and time, you know, it's all about priorities. Like, yeah, you're like, you're obviously like, like, I don't want to mention it in a fucking my box. So you're like, fuck it. I'm not going to be one of these OnlyFans girls that's you know, turning out fucking insane content all the fucking time. Yeah. That just seems tiring for me because I'm like, I don't I don't have the energy to well, even do that. Like, some people do, and that's great for them. And I wish I was like that sometimes. But, like, I get tired of people. And like, you know, if it's someone else's production gets fucked up, I'm like, damn, that sucks. But if it was, like, people canceling on me personally, I'd be like, what the fuck? I'd like, you know. <laughs> you know, like, I don't think I could could deal with that, you know, but learning how to do the back end of like actual production has been helpful. So if I did want to start booking people for my content, myself, I'd be like, hey, you guys have to stick to the same thing because I feel like that's where content trade gets kind of like loosey goosey, like, oh, we can do this or we can do this. Or, and just show up. Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh what are we going to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. You know, yeah, as someone who edits some people's OnlyFans sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, I definitely edited a scene. I'm sorry to the audience that heard me bitch about this recently, but I definitely edited a scene for three fucking professionals. And one of the camera angles was just flat white male talent ass. <laughs> <laughs> like during a whole fucking head scene. I'm like, uh-huh. the fuck do you want me to do with this? Like, 
my two angle choices are inner thigh and flat white male talent ass. Like, the fuck is happening here? How do you want me to edit this? How? <laughs> Nobody wants this. Oh, maybe someone on like... <laughs> somebody wants that. Somebody will want that. But we're trying to go to the highest common denominator here. And the, the average McDonald's of porn fan doesn't want flat white ass or someone's just inner thigh and a head. Mm -hmm. I think. I don't know. I was once given a note of... Oh, what would you jerk off to? I'm like, not this. <laughs> you're my like, you're my friend and my client. I'm not jerking off to your content. Sorry. I'm not into jerking off to my friends. Yeah. How about you? No. See? It's not weird. I've had other people like, why not? If you think they're hot, why not? And I'm like, because I don't know. It's weird to, to like, hi, friend. Uh, 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 uh. It's weird. I don't know. Yeah. But then it's like, but I know and like that person. Yeah, but if I found them that, like, attractive, I could probably just also go to them and be like, hi, do you want to have sex? And they would probably be like, yeah. And then I'd be like, okay, well, I can just fuck this person. Yeah, I, like, I don't necessarily have that option. Fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jane. I don't necessarily have that option. <laughs> there are definitely some friends who are like, so down to fuck? Oh, nope. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, like, I, I definitely had a uh, friend of mine be like, you know, I like hanging out with you because you, you know, have never tried to fuck me. I'm like, I didn't think it was on the table, so I'm cool. Like, I, I enjoy your company, but I definitely don't think it's ever been on the table. So that's why I'm not trying to fuck you because, like, you have never given me any inclination that, like, you've wanted to fuck me. And I'm not going to be like, ah, <laughs> so fucking, it, like, uh, no. Now, if you change your mind, well, you know, it's one of those things, but... It, it didn't. It doesn't come up. So you ha you have a distinct advantage there. I'm sorry. You ever had any dude that you've been like, hey, I think you're attractive. You want to fuck? Turn you down? No. See. I don't ask people to fuck though. Why not? Because I don't have to. What do you mean you don't have to? Because that's not my thing. I don't know. Well, this is why you haven't gotten laid since October. I don't care. It's not like at the forefront of my mind. I don't like go around thinking like, oh my god, I need to get laid. Like I'm not. Okay. What is at the forefront of your mind? I don't know. Nothing. My cat. My cat. Uh, hopefully not in a sexual way. No. <laughs> Obviously not. I just said I have more important things to think about than sex. No, than you getting laid. Not necessarily that your cat's not getting laid. My cat's not getting laid. Cat doesn't get in the heat. You know, Q-tip. To... It's a boy. Oh. But he also got snipped. <laughs> Oh, I'm from the shelter. Pour one out for you, your cat's <laughs> balls. Yeah, I got I, I rescued him from the from a no kill shelter. So yeah, they'd already snipped him. If they're not gonna kill him, how are you rescuing him? How is he being rescued? Well, it they they took him from a no they took him from the LA kill shelter and then they had him at another like uh, smaller shelter. But they need to get the ones out of there so they can get more that were gonna be killed. Oh, okay. I was like, it sounds like you just saved him from like a kitty hotel. No, I mean they would probably just keep on getting more cats, or they wouldn't be able to get any more cats if all their crates were full. So Man, that sounds like from sounds like bad luck for the kill shelter cats. Uh, yeah, but it's people like me who just walk into this. Like I was literally just walking on the side of the street, and I was like, "Oh my god, there's a shelter!" And I went in the shelter, and he was there, and he has his little paws out like of the crate, and he was like. Wah. Yeah. You're mine now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so what's his name? Tell everybody. His name is Jack. But all my friends make up other names for him. Well, because Jack's not necessarily a cat name. Yeah, it is. That, that's the, that, that, I mean, it is because you gave it to a cat. But... That's his legal name. Whoa, whoa. We don't want to dox people on this show. His uh, CJ calls him Mr. Sparkles. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's an interesting one. Yeah. He's very sparkly, though. He's a sparkly cat? Yeah. I don't think they're supposed to do that naturally. But he just says that's his personality. Oh, it's a personality sparkle. Like, oh, sparkles just I thought he was like fucking Twilight Vampire sparkling. And I'm like, cats aren't supposed to do that. No. Just got He's lost just... in the glitter. Yeah. He has a sparkling personality. Well, good on him. Somebody's got to.
Nobody here. No. I was actually half expecting CJ to show with you tonight. Uh, uh, we're going to hang out later. He's doing a photo shoot with John R. right now. Ah. Uh, yeah. I just... Uh, I have him come pick me up because I couldn't drive my car here because he said there was no parking. Which is accurate. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just have him pick me up. <laughs> like, <laughs> did you look around here? It's Hollywood. There is no fucking parking. Oh, that sounds like a you problem. And maybe if you're having people, you should like get more parking for them. I would love to. Let me get on building a parking structure for them. Yeah. Do you uh, not have like an extra spot in your garage? No? Nope. For whatever reason, this modern ass building has no guest parking. Hmm. Years ago, we could get away with like parking people illegally like in a like the fire lane in the garage. <laughs> but they changed up building management and they fucking tow people now. Oh, so. Yeah. And I would much rather you suffer with trying to find street parking or Ubering here than... Getting towed out of my fucking garage and me being like, <laughs> sorry, thanks for doing the show. Have a good one. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I'll just see if CJ can pick me up. Yeah, I, I just uh, I assumed you two were just attached at the hip at all times. So, yeah, he's like my, like, the, I don't know. Yeah, people, people are rude, but he's just, he's just like my best friend, pretty much. That's cool. Yeah, like, I mean, there was no, Allegations besides, like, I just assumed it was yeah. like, oh, no, Jade and CJ. Yeah, yeah. No, he was on the other. He was on the cooking show. Yeah, that's that's all, like, <laughs> I didn't make that assumption, like, when I first met you two, so I met both of you at a party. Yeah. And I didn't make that assumption at the party, but when he was on Cooking with Nathan with you, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I guess they're a package deal. I guess I booked CJ, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's mostly just, like, because we, we hang out a lot, and because he lives far away he lives down like long beach so when he comes up we'll just hang out why was he living in long beach i don't know that's a him question not a me question i would why don't you adopt him instead of a cat then oh sometimes he sleeps on my floor in front of my fireplace there you go <laughs> save him from long beach yeah i told him well i think yeah so uh because he did like mainstream photography and so then i hired him into porn i was like hey i can't offer you a real job do you want to be a porn photographer how did that all go down how'd you steal him away from mainstream it went down well i mean he works as a porn photographer well yeah but tell the story um there's not really a story um he was like mutual friends of a friend and so he came to a christmas party that i had and we talked a little and we were gonna do a shoot and then um, I met him again at another fr the friend's birthday party, and he was saying like, you know, oh, you know, looking for work, this, that, this, that. And at the time, the crew that I was with, we also needed a photographer, and so I was like, I might have a job for you. It's not normal, but it's normal to the rest of us. Yeah, it pays well. You're still photographing models. You know, you might see a little more, might be a little bit different, but you might get some set of fill on your equipment. <laughs> Right. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I'm going to go back and talk to the director I was working with at the time and see if, you know, you could come for like a trial day. And, you know, everything went well. And so, yeah, you just start working with uh, that crew now. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And that's what I like to do. You know, and some people get weird about that, but I like to hire my friends to work with, especially if I'm going to be working long, consistent days with these people because it just makes it easier. easier. You know, some people are like, oh, you know, you're favoriting friends, this, that, over people who have experienced whatever, whatever. I'm like, hey, like, I can talk to my friends in a certain way that I can't talk to a rando. You know, like, if you're fucking up, I can go up to you and be like, you are fucking up. If you're doing good, I feel more comfortable, like, explaining that to you. So I'd rather work with people that I'm comfortable with than people who I don't know. And, like, people get weird about that. Fuck them. Like, every walk of life, doors get open because of people you know. Yeah, and, like, that's the point. Like, if I could have a crew that just, like, all my best friends are on, like, I just feel like that. Like then it doesn't, it's work, but it doesn't feel like work because I'm like, hey, I'm getting paid to hang out with my friends and, like, we get to create something cool. And, like, that's all it is. And people who want to get weird about that and be like, oh, like, I'm not your friends and you're not going to hire me. I'm like, no, like, clearly not. Like, even if you're thinking that, like, train in your... Like, I'm not just going to hire random people who don't have skills. Like, obviously, if I, like, didn't know what he was doing, I'd be like, yeah, I'm not going to put you in this. Right, like, because that negatively re reflects on you. Exactly, yeah. Like, so people being like, I don't know. Yeah, I've had issues with that recently when people are just like, oh, you only want to hire your friends. Like, that's a conflict of interest. And I'm like. Not at all. I think that's the opposite of a conflict of interest. <laughs> like, if this person fucks up, I can go up to them and be like, yo, bro, I hired you and you're fucking up. You're fucking me up. You're fucking all this up. So you better fix it or get the fuck out of here. Right. Well, and <laughs> what you want to hire. Let's see. 
someone you know you trust versus a complete fucking stranger if the skill sets are equal. Yeah. Like, yeah. the only time that ever gets fucking weird is, like, when you want to give a friend a fucking chance and they're like, oh, you're a lazy piece of shit. Yeah. But also, like, with everything, too, there's, like, a learning curve, definitely, in this industry, too. Oh, yeah. And because I used to work in VR, there's a fucking learning curve in VR. If you take a PA from a normal set and drop them on a VR set, yeah, they're not going to fucking know what to do. <laughs> so I think, you know, like, things have to be taken in those bites, you know, and assess, like, okay, what do you know, what don't you know? And things have to be explained still to people. But I'd much rather, yes, I would rather put time into training somebody that I know and uncomfortable with than like someone I don't. And it's also set to fucking set. Like, cause I've PA'd for various people mm -hmm. over the years. And it's like working for one director is very different than working for others. Like I've had some directors who were literally like, I am there to, as a PA to make talent comfortable, handle paperwork. Yeah. Like doesn't really want, like maybe to run and get them batteries. That doesn't really want me to do shit with the actual production end of things. Mm -hmm. I've had other fucking directors where it's like, why are you not moving that light? Yeah. Like, why are you not moving that light right it, now? It comes down to a lot of director communication, too. And some people aren't that good. Like, yeah, I worked on a bunch of sets recently, and some are better than others. And some I know what to do. And some, like, if I know the people better, I'm like, I'm just going to do this. This is my job. Yes, I'm just compliance today. Following the talent around. I'm wrangling the talent. Right. But other ones, they give me, yeah, they literally gave me a camera. And they're like, here, your third camera. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay. Well, and there's definitely been sets on where, like, I started to do stuff that was, like, wasn't necessarily handing me up and beyond. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah. oh, was I not supposed this to be? a union set. Don't fucking touch This them. is porn. <laughs> Come on. No. I, I, I'm not. You are a PA and you are touching the camera. No. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Fucking mainstream sets. Every time I'm on a mainstream set for anything, I'm like, y'all are so inefficient. Every time. <laughs> Well, yeah, because they have that whole, like, I'm this and this is all I can do. I can't, you know, bro over here is dropping all those lights, but I can't help him because that's his job. Right. Like, I cannot plug this thing in because that's his job. Yeah. <laughs> in an amateur movie, I forgot to turn off the AC. Yeah. We're fixed now. We're fixed now. I was setting up to pretty much the moment you walked in the door. So I was just like, D -d 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 -d, and then you can show up. I'm like, oh, yeah, forgot to turn off the air. I've been doing this for years. Fuck. <sighs> This is a really good endorsement of hire me as a PA. Because <laughs> you always remember to get everything ready for production. Yay. Yeah. Including turning off the <laughs> fucking arrow. Uh, some of the directors I worked for like had great fucking like tricks on some of that shit. Like uh, one of the mind geek sets I worked on, like to turn, they'd turn off the fridge like, you know, during kitchen scenes and like they'd put their car keys in the fridge to make yeah, sure to. Yeah. Be like, don't, don't forget to turn it back on, guys. <laughs> right? Don't need a bunch of rotten fucking fruit <laughs> for the next crew. Yep. Or yeah, or they're like, oh, we're going to be charged for all the food in here. <laughs> you guys let it go bad. Whoops. Whoops. But yeah, every time I'm on a mainstream set, like I, it's been a while. It's been like a little over a year, but like a year and a half ago, I was on a mainstream set for something. And it was just like, there are literally 30 of you that would be done with like three of us would do this. Have this whole fucking day done mind-boggling people don't understand like how much a porn crew gets fucking done mm -hmm. with how little resources they have as long as i've been in that's how it's always been mm -hmm. but i wonder if that's like a, a budget thing or like the formerly outlaw nature of porn thing or I both i think it's both like because it's like oh we can't have too many people on the set because if it's a really obvious fucking set the police are going to show up oh, so, yeah i think it's definitely a budget thing for some productions too like oh you know if we have to pay each P pa three hundred dollars to even show up how much like how how much can we make this one person do i've worked for mind geek it's like mind geek ain't short on money i I'm think it's also about like how much control people want to give up too is what i've experienced really what i've experienced lately i'm like hey you know we could have all the like you know clearly vr is a lot of work i need more people on set if i am a coordinator i don't want to be setting up all this shit i don't want to be hauling it all to the van can we hire someone else and then they're like why don't you just do it or like we have these two people i'm like no we we have the money to hire someone else oh i don't want to train someone else i don't care like this is like to make it more efficient we need to you need to take those steps 
you know, so I think a lot of people just have that control aspect to it. Because I get it, it's your set, you want everything to go right, but you still got to let other people in sometimes. Because, yeah, if I'm compliance, I don't want to be picking up everything. <laughs> Nor should you be picking up everything. I mean, that's part of the reason, like, mainstream got trade unions and shit like that. Because I'm sure back in the good old days of fucking black and white and shit, mm. there was one motherfucking PA just doing fucking everything. <laughs> like, this one director just be like, and do this and this and this and this and this. Huff some lead paint and get back to work. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you, I'm like, what you gave me like ten things to do. Which one do you want me to do first? Oh, now you're upset that I'm not doing the other five things. Oh my god, like I'm only one person. Excuse me while I go like cry in the bathroom. <laughs> that doesn't happen often, does it? Not anymore. Oh, it did. Yeah. In the past. Not literally cry. Let me just like take a minute. Like let me go outside and walk around my car five times. Compose. Yeah, literally just like Compose. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Just <laughs> it's okay. He's an asshole. He's been working in porn for 25 years. He has no life. Compose. <laughs> He'd only get, he only gets laid because he's on this set. Compose. People think that uh, he could do something for their careers. Compose. <laughs> I'm not talking about anyone specific. And if you think I'm talking about you, I definitely am. I'm not talking about anyone specific. His words, not mine. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not talking about <laughs> anyone specific. But if you are offended by that and you take that to heart, I am talking about yeah, you. Yeah, then maybe you should, like, go reevaluate your life if you're making your own PAs cry. Right? I, well, and I didn't actually ask, what made you decide to, like, take the step in front behind the camera? I was just like, at the time, and I'm thankful that I was offered this by that crew. Um, I was just offered it. Like, do you want to do this? And it was, like, during the time of COVID when, like, no one was really working regardless. I was like, okay, you know, like, try it out. And then from there, I was just doing, like, NMC coordinator, compliance PA work. And then they let me do bookings. And then the company itself that contracted that crew was like, hey, you're doing a really good job there. Do you want to just come work for us in pre-production? So that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, I saw in your... IG stories, you were like, I need a PA tomorrow. <laughs> well, yeah, because I just got assigned to doing pre-production for all the other crews that weren't that one crew. And so I don't know what they're working with. And all my crew right now is on that set. And so because the dates are just like, you know, we want to centralize everything with the company more because everything's just like all over right now. And I mean, it, can you tell the people what company you're working for? I work for Sex Like Real. Um, and so I, it's, yeah, VR. And so I'm trying to get everybody more like on the same page so that if we do have a big day, um, I can borrow crew to crew, like, you know, cause that's what it should be. You know, people shouldn't like no one, like we're all independent contractors regardless, unless your contracts are whatever, but for the most part, especially crew is all independent contractors and you shouldn't be puppy guarding and like gatekeeping certain people to certain things and being upset if they like, you know, it's work is work. Right. If they're trying to make a fucking living. Oh my God. Exactly. If you can get $500 here and there, why does it matter? You know, what does it matter? Especially if it's for the same company, you shouldn't fucking get mad about that. You should be wanting to help your but people. Mine, oh. mine, mine, my people. Oh, and, mine. and I'm like, technically these are my friends that I brought here. So like if they, if I want to send them there, so they can make more money. It's nothing bad blood. It's none of that. I'm just like, literally, I want this person to make more money. And I know that they're good at their job and they know that they'll perform. If I'm conducting this set, if I'm on that set and I need someone to do shit, I'd rather that person do it because I know that they can't. Makes perfect sense to me. And so, yeah, getting thrown into um, pre-production for all of their crews. I'm kind of like trying to figure out what everyone else is working with. And it's not as advanced as how I had it set up. Uh-oh. Not in a bad way, just kind of like, oh, I have my roster of crew here, um, and they don't, you know? And so I'm kind of like, how can I kind of, you know, for the coming months, how can I make everybody work together? Because, yeah, I'd rather people that I know, all the PAs and grips and photographers I know make double, you know? If both of our crews are sitting, sh shooting, sitting, both of our crews are shooting 16 a month, if my, if the crew themselves can work both those and make double. Yeah. That's the point, right? Six scenes a month isn't a ton. <laughs> like, yeah. not a ton at all. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you can shoot 10 of those, like, you're good. And then CJ can move out to L.A. <laughs> Permanently live in front of your fireplace. <laughs> yeah. You could rescue him. Yeah. I just, yeah, I, I 
I want people that I trust to work on my sets. And if I have to train them a little more, so be it. Because I know that they'll listen to me. Like, if you, yeah, if you train people with, like, you know, as a friend, too, then they want to impress their friends, honestly, you know? And it's they have more of a tie to it than, oh, just this is just some random person. Yeah. Hiring me, like, oh, hey, this is my friend, and it's chill on the set. We can all hang out. We can have fun. We can just shoot some cool work and, like, hang out after, like, whatever. I'm very big on, like, if someone refers me, like, I need to not fuck up because, like, you put your name out there for me. Yeah. Like, if I just get hired for something mm -hmm. and it's on my own name, mm -hmm. I may fuck up. <laughs> I may fuck up. Mm -hmm. Shit happens. Yeah. But if, like, you were to refer me to something, oh, well, I, I cannot fuck up here. Like, mm -hmm. I had a gig. It was a mainstream gig, like, kind of explode last year. And the first thing I did, even though it was, as far as I know, not my fault, and shit went sideways in a really bad way, I called my buddy who referred me to the gig, like, yo, man, I'm sorry that this this shit went sideways. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the fuck happened, but I am sorry. Like, my biggest concern, besides this really fucking up my life, mm -hmm. because I was dependent on this gig... I am sorry that like this put potentially put you out. Mm -hmm. Like that's just how I'm wired. Like, yeah. and that's one of those things. Like, if you're my friend and you kind of fuck me over, we may be able to make amends. No, but if I, <laughs> but I'm saying like, if I refer you to something and like I vouch for you with someone else and you fuck me over, you are fucking dead to me. Yeah, you know it's situational. Like if it's situational, but I feel like there are some things that people definitely do that think like. Yes, this could benefit them. And then I don't get that thing like, oh, like, it can help me, but it fucks you. I don't do that kind of stuff. Oh, no. Well, if, if it's something fucking malicious, fuck you. It's but if it's like. I was fired this week. So I don't know. I'm kind of salty. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> I was fired and hired. So that was like the weird. That's the weird brain fuck going through my like, yes, I was fired off of something. That was what it was. But I was rehired to the bigger corporate side of it, so I'm, like, still upset, but I'm, like, I still am your guys. But you're obviously valued, and are you making more money now? Yes, I am hourly now. <laughs> so, like, oh, wait a minute. They kind of did you a favor. Yeah. They got you out of a drama-filled situation, yeah. and you're making more money? Well, I was hired before I got fired, but then it was, like, after I got fired, they were, like, okay, like, now you can really actually work for us. And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, was it one of those things where, like, did the person who fired you find out that, you know, you got hired for this? He congratulated me on getting hired. By oh, yeah, so he was jealous. Me. So he was jealous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but, like, that's the weird. It's just, like, a brain fuck to me. Because, like, yes, eventually I wasn't going to plan to be working on set every day, but I wasn't going to leave on such bad terms i was going to make sure there's someone to replace me that i trusted and you know that's what it was like even if i'm going to leave somewhere if i'm still your friend i still want everything to go well if i'm still leaving my friends there i want it to be good yeah you know i'm not gonna like cuss anybody out i'm not gonna just like leave in a shit storm like i was going to stay for at least like three or four more months even though they were offering me more money over there well that's crazy you know and like my whole thing even with doing pa work it's not about the money for me. Why not? Because like I don't I don't need it. The, well, the, the, what are you independently wealthy? Yes. <laughs> Marry me? <laughs> my OnlyFans. I can make all my money off of there. I mean, I need a good sugar mom. Marry me? Like get in line. Uh, well, I'm trying to cut. <laughs> I'm obviously trying to cut, duh. That wasn't a no. I'm not marrying anybody. That Aww. seems like too much of a commitment. Oh, what, you want the government to incorporate your love? No, I don't. And that was the, that's the thing. Like, if I ever, like, get, get married, I don't, yeah, unless, like, that person has, like, incredible, like, benefits or something. But, like, I'm probably going to not marry anybody or be with anyone that has incredible, like, see, I like, I don't get, I don't have, like, a work that gives me great health insurance or, like, you know, all this stuff. So, like, unless someone else does, like, I don't really see a point. You're like, I'm marrying for medical benefits and that's it. it yeah, I, I don't see a point in getting married. Though. To have my finances tied up with your finances? No. Well, so the only real fucking reason to get married, which is terrifying. And then if I want to get divorced, it takes, like, fucking forever. Like, that's just... Well, for sure. Statistically, <laughs> you will. <laughs> yeah. 
But what's terrifying about like being in like a long relationship with someone and not being married is if you are, unless they have spent, set up like a living trust or a living will or some shit, yeah. if it ever gets to the point of like major medical decisions, uh -huh. if you're not married to them, you can't make them. Mm -hmm. Can't can't you like sign things though that say like well yeah like like, 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 like when you're go into the hospital you like tell people this is yeah but I'm assuming like okay you get into a car accident and like you're in a vegetative state uh -huh. and you don't have a DNR on record uh -huh. but yeah your significant other of however long is like I know she doesn't want to stay in this fucking vegetative state forever. He can't make the call to pull your plug. So, but can you like make, could you go to like a lawyer uh, and have documents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can set up a living okay, trust. Okay. But yeah. you have to have the forethought to do that. Most fucking people don't. Okay. Well, I, I, I've put clearly a lot of thought into this because yeah, I don't, I don't want my, it's mainly just my finances. I don't want tied up in anybody else's shit. Right. Unless they're bringing a lot more to the table. Even then, like, I can make, like, my whole thing is, like, I would just make my own and, like, this is mine. But, but what what dollar amount where it's like, okay, it's worth tying my ass up with your money? I don't know. Millions? Multi-millions? Oh, well, not just a million. <laughs> Look at the world <laughs> we live in. It's just a billionaire? A one millionaire? Fuck off. But we live in Los Angeles, California. You can't even buy a nice house for under a million. Yeah, but who's paying cash for a million dollar home? I don't know. Unless you're doing much better than I think you are. We both rent. Yeah, I rent. Because, yeah, I'm waiting for the market to crash. Because I could buy a house right now. But then when it does crash, it's not going to be worth that. <laughs> fair, fair. I don't want to do that. See, I, I'm at this point going to rent till I die at this. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I mean, yeah, I have, a, I have a pretty good living setup right now. So I don't really feel... I don't want to move again also. I hate moving. Oh, same. I've moved. Like, this is the third... House I have, I, I live in a townhouse now, too, so it's, like, kind of nice. So I'm, like, pretty set. And, yeah, I don't want to pack up all my shit again. Done it, yeah. I've moved four times. Ever in your whole life? No, like, by myself. As, like... As an adult? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've moved more times than I was a kid, but... Yeah, that's beyond your control. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I have to put on my... But, yeah, no. Um, Where all did your family move you around to? Um, I lived in Connecticut, and then when I was in seventh grade, I moved to Chicago, and then that's why you recognize the Chicago Transit card yeah. on my fucking floor well, when you walked it. Adventure card on the floor. Um, yeah, and so then I moved around a little in Chicago with my with my mom. Yeah, we talked about this at the party a little yes, bit. Yes. Um, and then I moved out here. Yeah, and I've yeah I've moved a couple times, a few times out here. You know, um, just finding somewhere but i think now that i've been here for you know this is my sixth year um i'm pretty chill you know i mean i don't want to live at avalon my whole life <laughs> i feel you i feel you yeah this is my second la apartment and like i'm trying not to leave here but they fucking up my rent nine percent last year so I'm like yeah they switched me month to month on mine because i'm renting from a private owner now cause that's awesome i have a condo so i paid the first year year lease and now that it's month to month i think they'll just let me chill there so yeah, as as long, long, yeah as long as they just let me hang where i'm at like i don't really get like i'm not gonna move yeah i have corporate fucking landlords and they're like yeah oh covid's over we can legally fucking raise your rent yeah. here you go motherfucker i'm like I am the longest running resident in this fucking building. You're gonna up my fucking rent nine percent, motherfucker. Yeah, well, that's what how it was in the past too. They lived because yeah, one was at Ava and the other one was another one like that. And so yeah, every year, like I moved in at one at a loft. It was super nice, nineteen hundred. By the time I moved out, twenty one fifty. I'd kill for twenty one fifty at this point. Kill. Well, it it was a loft. It was a studio loft though. But it was it was really cool though. It was cool. It was I would kill for twenty one fifty. Kill, yeah. kill. Except my apartment kept getting broken into, so that my car got broken into in there. So I was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Well, yeah, fuck that. I mean, yeah. it was yeah, it was nice while it lasted before people started breaking in. But yeah, they just like his corpus, so they didn't want to do anything about it. So I was like, okay, like this is no. <laughs> but yeah, I'm happy where I am now. Hopefully, I'll just get to. Get to chill there until the market crashes, and then I can buy a house. <laughs> we just need a couple good riots, and people will leave LA. <laughs>
that was the one nice thing about COVID is motherfuckers were leaving here so much like rent went down. No. Oh. Do you want another one of those? Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to pause for a moment because I have to play bartender for Jade. So I like there's actual <laughs> mixology going into this. I can't just do it at the table. So we will pause for a moment. Do your mixology at the table? Not over my gear. Fuck no. <laughs> I enjoy your company and all, but I do not want to trash my gear for your cocktail. Okay. Fine. Sorry. Sorry. We are back. Jade has a cocktail. We are not doing it. <laughs> Why don't you want to do it? You should have one that's just ASMR. I don't. <laughs> I don't need porn to make porn for weirdos. I make porn for normal people. Like I don't need to make porn for people that are ashamed of porn. Why is everyone obsessed with like coming on here and being ASMR? Oh my god, you have a good microphone. ASMR, ASMR. Because nobody else speaks with good micro. Or like they're like you know three feet above our head where we can't do weird shit to them. I mean, a lot of people have fucking sucked that microphone in their mouth. No, I... I, I mean, they're all tested, but they may still have chlamydia. <laughs> I'm pretty sure chlamydia can't exist on a microphone. It's fine. I don't know. There's new strains of chlamydia. <laughs> don't stick the mic in your mouth then. No, it's too like... Yeah, no. I mean, people have stuck that fucking thing in their mouth. I'm not one of those people. You guys Well, I'm not asking you. Degenerates. They are. <laughs> That's why I booked them. I'm here for the disgusting degenerates. Anyways. The audience wants to hear the disgusting degenerate stories, goddammit. She's like, yep, not out of me, you're not. I gotta work in the back end of this piece. <laughs> I'm not some new girl fresh off the fucking bus who's like, I'm a slut! <laughs> I was never that way. And yeah, once I got, yeah, people get upset that I wouldn't be like that on set. Once I got blacklisted from a company that will not be named because the male talent was upset that I like didn't want to literally like suck his ego and suck his dick the whole time. That was fun. And I like, I was just there and I was just like, dude, I like, don't know what you want. Like, like, yeah. And even like doctors, I'm like, okay, like, you know, we were, we were unsure at first, but when the camera goes on, that's what I'm being paid for. I'm not being paid to go around and like, it's just not me, you know? And, so, and that's, that's fine. Yeah. And, like, and so for people to get, like, all, like, bunched up over that, I'm just like, we're like... Well, and I, I feel a lot of, like, newer performers who were like, I'm not just like... Like, it's not them either. It's just the persona that they they think they are expected to put on. Uh-huh. And... But even if that is them, like, that's great for them. But, like, I feel like companies, directors, and, like, shouldn't hold that. Like, they should know better. You know, like, if... You know, we're also here on say this, that, this, that, whatever. But like you as a company, as a director, if you are standing by that, this person did not. They performed during their scene. They performed amazing during their scene. But yeah, they weren't involved in like sucking dudes ca uh, dick in the bathroom or like they didn't want to like be like, oh, my God, you're like so and so like that shouldn't be a, like. No, the priority should be. Did you show up on time with a clean test? Did you do your fucking job? Exactly. Did I do the scene? Yes, I did the scene. Yeah. And I did it well. So like. What off camera doesn't like what I do doesn't like matter to you as long as I'm behaving. As long as you're not like being a horrible fucking diva or no, I'm just sit like I would literally just sit there like by myself and I'd like, be on my phone like drink some wine. I don't know like I don't even remember what I was doing that day. <laughs> but yeah, I remember hearing that and I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's wild to me like especially watching the people that like that I've known for a number of years when they first got in and like got the. I to be a wild slut and then like realize that like oh i don't have to be a wild slut to fucking make it in this business and then like the real person fucking comes out like hey what's going on like oh what happened to you just like fucking people in bathrooms like yeah yeah i grew out of that shit <laughs> yeah yeah no like that was never I me mean, because it's just like doesn't it didn't make sense to me and i felt like i was yeah being someone i wasn't you know, and like that was awkward to me. I'm just like very aware of myself too. I think, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, like I'm being like a fool. Why would I do that?" No, you know, I don't want to be like viewed as like stupid or like ditzy or whatever. Why are you here then? I will leave then. I will leave. That's all right. I got what I wanted. You're just having chlamydia. For chlamydia. Got. I got the content I needed. You can go. I wish I, I still named the shows, like, because when the podcast first started, like, I came up with, like, goofy titles for every episode. So 
this would definitely be called ASMR Chlamydia, <laughs> but I don't do goofy titles anymore. Why so not? SEO. That's pretty lame. It's business. Can't you still have your SEO without the title? So what are you going to name this one? What are you going to name it? With Jane Cush. Oh. And like, it's really straightforward. It's with, ge- and now we drink with guest name. I mean, there'll be wackiness in the description, but like when I first started doing the show, it was like, come on, like, just wait, like dicks for Jesus was like a name of an episode. Like, you know, we, it was just like, oh, we're just getting wacky with this uh-huh. shit. Like, but no one's searching dicks for Jesus. Well, maybe someone's searching dicks I think for Jesus. Some people are definitely searching dicks for Jesus. Right. But not enough people versus the people searching your name. Yeah. yeah. Seeing as you are still in the top 300 on the hub. I am. It, it's so impressive. It is. It really is. Like, I, I need to put on sunglasses. I can't. Like, you're so such a bright star. I can't even look upon you. Yeah, you should call it. This is my uh, Jade Kush's God Complex. That's why I'm getting fired. <laughs> I'm just going around. I'm like, no, you guys don't talk about it. <laughs> so, what is one sacrifice to the goddess Jade Kush? Her soul. <laughs> that it? That all? The entirety of it, yes. That only weighs 23 grams or 21 grams. I don't know. I don't weigh people's souls. Well, then there was that fucking movie. Jesus, that movie's got like 20 years old. I don't watch movies. You don't watch fucking movies, really? No, I don't watch movies. You're in fucking production and you don't watch movies? No. Really? Yeah, tell that to the the film guy, dude. He'd always be like, watch this movie, watch it. And I'd watch it, I'd be like, yep, okay. So that lasted, what, a month? No, we were together for a while, actually, but like just. What's a while? What's a while in your world? Like three years. Okay, that's a fair amount. Yeah, a while, yeah. But, yeah, like, movies just aren't, like, I didn't grow up watching TV. Like, I didn't have TV when I was growing up. I didn't have cable. And so, like, it never was really just, like, ingrained in my brain. Like, I need this. You know, like, I don't, I, people always make fun of me because I have, like, a bunch of TVs in my house. And I don't watch them. They're just, like, for decoration or for people who want to watch them. But, like, if I'm just at home by myself, I'm not going to be watching TV. What do you do for fun? Not watch TV. Like, I Well, obviously not watch TV. I just, like, don't. See the enjoy. Like, I, what do you do for fun, Jade? Nothing. Bullshit. We don't have fun here. Well, obviously we don't have fun here. But what do you do for fun at home? I don't do. I hang out with my friends sometimes. I don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Didn't stare at my cat. He's pretty fun. He does sparkle. Yeah, he does sparkle. He's funny. You're like I just take mushrooms and stare at my cat. <laughs> That would be interesting. It probably makes his little noise. Seriously, like when you're offset and not. I sleep. Like for the past couple of days, I haven't had anything to do and I've just slept in. Do you have mono? Do I have mono? No, why would I have mono? All the sleep? No. I'm just giving you diseases this whole episode. <laughs> By the end of this, it's like, what disease did Matt not give her? Yeah, you're giving me all these. Let me just go home and shove a bunch of fucking Tylenol gel caps up my asshole. It's amazing. You'll thank me. Uh-huh. I mean, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't own Tylenol gel caps, so. I Guess what? Own- there is a 24-hour pharmacy between you here and home. I'm sure. Right, well, that's great because I gotta go pick up a bunch of Red Bulls for tomorrow. <laughs> Seriously, you don't do anything for fucking fun. And uh, no. The fuck not. I don't know, like. Usually someone else is like, hey, you want to come do this fun thing? And I'm like, okay, I'll do that fun thing. Well, what is the fun thing that you could drag to fucking do? I don't know. I went to I went to a, a techno rave the other day. That was pretty fun. A techno rave? Techno rave. Why do you sound like you're a fucking boomer when you say techno rave? I don't know. It was techno rave. That's what they invited me to. They were like, we're going to a party. And I was like, we're going to party. Techno rave. And I was like, okay. I feel like it just you can just say rave. But it was techno. It's specifically techno. Isn't that what they normally play at raves? EDM house. I mean, EDM covers techno. It's electronic dance music. It's a speci- I don't know. That's just what I was told, okay? Okay. Maybe I'm the old man and I don't fucking know. I don't know. I, I'm the old dude. Like, back in my day, they just called them raves. I don't know. I'm not, like, a rave expert. You're not? No. I was so deceived. Why did I book this show? I, I, I like... I had to fucking make cocktails 
and like I was told you're a rave expert. By who? I played the fifth. Jay doesn't believe me. Nor should she. I'm full of shit right now. I know. I'm completely full of shit. Evidence. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of like, what the fuck do you do for fun? Like, there's got to be something. No fun allowed. See, now you're just fucking with me. I met you at a party. You obviously do. I just go to parties that people invite me to. <laughs> Is that just how it goes? You're like, <laughs> I'm offset. Uh, what party am I going to tonight? Yeah, it's pretty much just like, hi, what are you doing? Hi, what are you doing? What are you doing this time? I'm like, I don't know, guys. What are you doing? Okay, I guess I'll come see you. Maybe. I don't know. Someone else drive me there. <laughs> Look at Jade's life. She's like, I don't have to drive for the party. I just get invited. I don't have to ask anyone if they <laughs> want to have sex. Like, I, this is my life. That's my existence. You just be. You be here now. And that's all there is. That's all there is. That's all there is. I'm not going to, like, go out of my way and try to do things because that's how you sell your, set yourself up for disappointment. If you have expectations and you're like, I'm going to go do all these things today. And then none of them happen. And then you're disappointed. If you just kind of, like, be. You can't be disappointed. You can be disappointed. But it's not, like, as big as, like, you know, especially, oh, I thought this event was going to be really great and I, like, got everyone to go and it fucking sucks and everyone's mad at me. I'm not going to be that person. I can be there being that person be like, you know, this event fucking sucks. Why would you bring us here? <laughs> oh, future notes to the publicist happening right now. Like, this thing sucked. Why did you invite me here? Why did you invite me, Matt? I hate this. I hate this. At least you're getting better at making this cocktail. But if it was the same, I'd be like, what the fuck am I here for? I can take notes. I can take <laughs> notes. Like, I I don't have such an ego. I mean, like, no, that's how you get a Midori Sour. <laughs> like, that's how it is. If you don't like it, fuck it. No, and you're like, hey, make this improvement. Like, okay, I made this improvement. Good job. Like, I don't understand people who can't... It, have such a fucking ego on them that they can't accept change or accept that, like, they don't fucking know everything. I know very little. Very little. I know very little about a lot. Yeah. It's one of those things where, like, I thought I knew very little about very little, and then more and more I experienced the world, like, oh, fuck, I actually know a lot of shit. Fuck! You are, I'm like, but... As long as you don't go around... Like having, like, you know, I have my interior God complex, but as long as I don't go around me, like, I'm better than all of you. As long as I just know it in my head that I'm better than everyone there. There's definitely some people I know I'm better than. Yeah, no, 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 no. I know that, but I'm not going to project that to them. You're, you know? you're, you're doing a good job of not doing that right now. Yeah, I know that. That's the whole point. Nobody <laughs> nobody knows that I go home and I'm like, fuck, what the fuck? Was oh, no, I, I'm, I was just implying that you... <laughs> You, you knew you were better than me, and you were just doing a good job of hiding it. Oh, yeah. I'm just doing You're like, I can make it such a better Midori Sour than this shit. Like, I'm just doing this podcast to be nice to Matt. Obviously. It's my make-a-wish. I actually have... I'm dying of cancer right now. This was my make-a-wish. <laughs> we grant... Yeah. See, <laughs> what a horrible make-a-wish. <laughs> no, my make-a-wish my, my make is Jade Kush comes and does uh, just a normal episode of the podcast. Good night, all. I think that's a pretty good make a wish. I think a lot of people would like to have me on their podcast. Well, obviously, you're being booked all the time. <sighs> Tell me. But none of us are dying of cancer about it. Maybe. I mean, you don't know. I'm not dying of cancer. You know everybody, Matt, you're just like throwing that wide net over saying no one's dying of cancer out here. No, I'm saying no one's dying of cancer to have you on their podcast. You don't know that still. Well, let me go give him motherfucker cancer and let's see if he books you. <laughs> Matt's going to give you chlamydia, mono, and cancer <laughs> all at the same time. Oh, yeah. With my penis. With his penis. It's a magical superpower. It, it's like when God was handing out superpowers, he's like, chlamydia, cancer, AIDS, fucking. Everything. Just all with your dick. Super penis. But guess what? None of my partners ever get to say that I was bad in bed because they're dead. Yes. That's the whole point. So good it killed them. Right? The, the, that's my claim. Not that, <laughs> not that they were bored to death and then just died of a horrible, painful disease shortly thereafter. But I am really doing a good job of selling myself here. Cheers, audience. <laughs> no, no, no. As far as I know, I'm not giving anyone anything with my penis at the, <laughs> these days. Like... I may have given someone chlamydia once. <laughs> no, my audience has heard this story. Like, so when I got chlamydia in 2015, I 
hooked up with somebody like before I got a test, but like I was definitely symptomatic. Well, Matt, I've never given anyone chlamydia. Well, aren't you Miss Fancy Pants? Yeah. I, being a fucking stereotypical stubborn dude. <sighs> just you, had, you, you said you had symptoms, and yet. Okay. So, all right. Story's over. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> he had symptoms. Still went and fucked around and gave some chlamydia. And this is why we have chlamydia. This is why everyone else. Has. Well, so I was like, oh, you feel a little funny. My dick's making all, you know, some. No, so like there, there was. Weird dick juice. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go fuck somebody. Can I, can, I, can I say my piece, please? No. Please? No. Please? You said you've already told the story. They've already heard it. Yeah, but you haven't heard it. I don't care. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> It's it's relevant. It's relevant at the moment. Okay, okay, the okay. eye roll. Oh my god, the eye roll could have fucking shake shook Earth's gravity. The eye roll was so hard there. Wow, Jade. Wow. It has to be like my like advertising gift. Just like I'm just saying, I had no discharge. There was there was nothing. No like weird fluids coming out of my dick. It was. Slightly painful to piss, and I was pissing more often than I should have been. That was it. I, being a stubborn dude, thought I had a UTI. Did you go to the doctor for your UTI? No. No. As <laughs> did I not preface this with being a stubborn dude? Yes, but I thought the you could still go to the doctor. Being a stubborn dude, I just thought I had a UTI. But I oh. still went to the doctor <clears throat> because that's what responsible people do, Matt. No, I just drank a lot of cranberry juice. A lot of fucking cranberry juice. Which makes you have to piss more. Yeah. I thought it was working. And then when I got back from fucking Spain and it was still happening, I'm like, I need to see a doctor. And I saw a doctor. And they're like, I went to like the free LA County clinic because I'm not talent. I don't need to go to TTS. Well, TTS won't even test you for a UTI. Well, but I went in like, at this point, we're like, it hadn't cleared up. I'm like, yeah, something's up. So I went to, like, the sexual, like, I went to the STD clinic. The sexual wellness. Yeah, I went to the social. <laughs> and, like, they looked at my urine sample and just gave me antibiotics. They're like, they didn't even wait for results. They're like, yeah, here you go. <laughs> yeah, not good. Not good. Not good. And to be fair, the sex started off protected. It kind of just broke, like. Broke. Broke. It broke, and then you were just like, you know what? Just continue. She was like, just continue. I started to sober up and like, why am I here? <laughs> Sometimes that. Why am I? Here? <laughs> it is the worst feeling in the world to sober up inside someone and be like, why am I here? Yeah. But I'm already pot committed. I might as well get off. I already gave her chlamydia already. What's the just continue? The worst part about this story, sorry to my audience that has heard this, but the worst part about that was like, she was a friend of a friend, like an acquaintance of a friend that I banged at a wedding. So you banged her friend. I banged the bride's acquaintance. Okay. And then you banged. That's the, the, that's what I gave to somebody. Oh, oh, I thought you said that you already banged her friend and then. No, no, no. The so friend that you banged's acquaintance. No, no, it's the bride's acquaintance. The like, I ended up banging at their wedding. At the wedding. At the wedding. At. Started the reception, but yeah. You gave her chlamydia at a wedding reception. In Spain. In Spain. No. See, at least when I was in Spain, we did a whole wedding movie. Nobody gave each other chlamydia. Well, and I'm not certain I gave her chlamydia. I think you did give her chlamydia. I, I, maybe I, put, I would put money. Like, if you're like, Matt, do you want to bet that you gave this person chlamydia? I would bet I gave this person chlamydia. Did you tell her that you had chlamydia. So I had no way to contact her. I called my, the groom. And he said, I gave homegirl committee. Yeah, I did. I, I'm like, bro, this is a weird conversation. But can you let this girl know that she needs to go get tested? Did they know that you banged her at their reception? Oh, sadly. Okay. He, The groom often says that I saved the wedding because I banged her because she was being horrible. Ah. Oh. And you gave her, yeah, it's her karma, right? Obviously, Matt. Oh, no. Her karma, you gave her committee. Oh, no. She's a horrible human being. Like. So she, she deserves to have I, chlamydia. I would never say she's she, a horrible human being. I would never say she deserves chlamydia, but holy fuck, she didn't deserve my dick. <laughs> she deserves the chlamydia. <laughs> right. Like, if I could have just shot chlamydia into her mouth, like, that would have been great. Like, well, you could have, Matt. I was a little too drunk for all that. <laughs> sounds like a you problem. It sounds like a her and I problem. <laughs> Not my problem.
Her and I. You are neither her nor I. Yes, and you're involving me in the story for me to judge your yeah. experiences. And so that is what I'm saying. So the worst part about it is I told my buddy to like, hey, you need to let her know. The next time he saw her at the bar, apparently he went to go tell her. And she opened up with, I didn't fuck your friend in Spain. And he went, never mind then. What? Like, so, so she's out here spreading chlamydia to all of Spain. Oh, this is back in the States. Like, she's an American, too. Oh, God. So she's back here in the States smelling, spreading, smelling, spreading and smelling all of chlamydia to everybody. I hope not five years, seven years later. Fuck, that was seven years ago. I'm going to die soon. That was 2015. That was seven years ago. Fuck. Uh -huh. It's closer to being a decade ago. Okay. Sad. It's fucking sad. I'm going to be dead soon, Jade. Just dead soon. From chlamydia and mono and cancer in your penis. Yes, because the minute my dick falls off, I'm just going to end it. I see. Hold my hair while I end it. But then I might get, like, chlamydia and mono and cancer, too. But you already have them. I don't. Your penis is the one that has all of that, not me. As far as I know, my dick only has cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Everything gets cancer eventually. Right? I don't know. What do I look like, a doctor? No, we specifically said you are not a doctor. Exactly. So why are you asking me medical questions? Because you're more of a doctor than I am? Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> Think I know anything about fucking medicine? I gave some broad chlamydia in fucking Spain. <laughs> if I knew shit about medicine, that wouldn't have happened. Obviously. Obviously. I would have just like jerked off on her back and everyone would have been fine. No. <laughs> this is why we have chlamydia in the industry. Because people like, <laughs> they just, you know, they just come on her back. She can't get pregnant. She won't get chlamydia. She won't get gonorrhea. No hey, I will go on record. I have never given anyone in the industry chlamydia. I don't know. No, no. That's accurate. I don't, know. I don't know your. I, I do. That is TMI for me, Matt. <laughs> I, I hate to break it to you. I've had sex before. Yeah, obviously with the girl you gave chlamydia. And other people. I had to get it from <laughs> someone else first. You know, you had sex with other people, I promise. Right. I had to get it from somewhere else. I didn't get it from that girl. Okay. Okay, Matt, if that's what makes you sleep better at night. No, that actually haunts my dreams. <laughs> like, that, that the girl was, I literally sobered up inside her. I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm giving that was uh, um, once I got back to the States revelation. And I was a responsible boy. Once I was back to the States like, and got STD tested, I was literally out to brunch with someone who tried to fuck me like right after I got tested. You're like, no, we can't fuck. I have chlamydia. I'm like, yo, I just went and got STD tested. I think my dick's dirty. No, we cannot fuck right now. Does she still want to fuck? She tried to, yeah. <laughs> See, yeah, this is why I don't have sex with people because they'd be like, too nasty. No. Well, you just got to get into another committed relationship. No. Why not? No. Why not? Because then I have to, like, deal with people's feelings, and that's, like, arguably worse than having chlamydia. <laughs> What's wrong with people's feelings? What happens? It's, like, too much responsibility, Matt. Like, what kind of responsibility? Like, I can't just take a Z back and get a shot in the butt and it goes away. Oh, my God, you feel this way. I'm sorry, you feel this way. What do you want me to do about it? What are you doing to motherfuckers? Nothing. Obviously something if they're getting up in their feelings. I mean, that's where relationships are, Matt. You get up in your feelings about someone and you have a little soft spot for them and that's disgusting. Well, yeah, your brain chemicals fuck with you. Yeah. So, like, no more of that because that's disgusting. You're just writing off all those brain chemicals? Just writing them yeah, all? I am. You're writing off the most socially acceptable addiction in the world. Yes. The countless amount of music. I want to go out there and have like small talk with guys until I'd be like, oh, yeah, maybe you're the one. Oh, fuck no. Well, don't have small talk. Have real talk with fucking dudes. Yeah, so they can like get my hopes up and then they're like, oh, you do porn? Do you get discriminated against a bunch? Yes. What happened? What? Give me, give me an example. What? I don't, people like expect different things from me because you do porn. They expect you to be the mad slut. Ah! Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, I don't care. Or, or on the flip side, they like say that they're okay with it, but then they're not okay with it, kind of thing. And that's just like a lot to deal with. You know, Matt, I'm 24. I'm not like looking to like 
<laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that that is the often the problem that a lot of performers unfortunately fucking deal with. It's like dudes say they're cool with it until they realize that they're not because dudes aren't honest with themselves. Or, yeah, or they're like half cool with it. They're like, yeah, I want to date a famous porn star and I'm kind of okay with it. But then they like accidentally watch some of your stuff. They're like, I'm not okay with it. I am okay with it. I'm not well, okay with it. They're okay with being the like, oh shit, the object of all your desires wants me. They're okay with that until you have to go back to work and like, oh shit, how did you become the object of everyone's or, desire? Or the object of my desire, but then you don't like do the same things with them. And I'm like, bro, like if I just had porn sex for the whole week, that's not what I want to do. No. You know, and you want to make eye contact. Right. I just <laughs> want to stare at you in fucking silence and that's it. And like, you know, that's where it comes in seeing porn people is easier because like some of them get that. Well, you know, yeah, they should. Yeah. <laughs> they fucking should. They get that. and But, like, at the same time, it's just, like, there's just, like, a lot going on. And, like, right now, I feel like I just need to focus on myself, Matt. Yeah, you have no fun. Yeah. You should be focusing on... You're 24 years old having no fun. Literally, you're like, I'm 24 years old. I don't know what I do for fun. Yeah, you should be focusing on you. Yeah, exactly. And so, like... Like, do not put your energy into anyone else. Figure out what Jade does for fun first. I know. I know. I'm trying I'm trying to. Like, you're like, I like fine art, but I don't have the time for it. Like, Well, Matt, I just got out of another three-year relationship, so I'm still trying to figure myself out, okay? How long ago did that happen? Like, when did the... When like did, October. Oh, that's why you haven't got laid since October. Got it. No, I mean I've like. F- doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're all good here. <laughs> this Jesus is almost crying. Like <laughs> I am almost always on the verge of tears. <laughs> I'm not trying to be that horrible director to you. Please don't go in the closet and cry. Like don't have to. Matt's just fucking with me. I'm getting, Matt's just fucking with me. I'm getting on Twitter right now and I'm canceling you. Good luck. So what happened in the relationship? Why did it go sideways? Was he just three years? Like, that's not like... Are you going to air this on yes. Instagram.com? I don't air on my dirty laundry mat. It's not that dirty. Okay. It just, it just decided it didn't... It wasn't, it wasn't really what I wanted because at the end of the day... It goes back to, like, I'm 24. I'm just still trying to figure myself out. He was, Your brain's not fully cooked. Yeah. He, he was older, and he thought he wanted all these things. And I'm just like, at the end of the day, like, I'm just not ready. What do you want? I don't know. Children? Your financial records? No. No. It's just like, just like we, you know, he's a great guy. We just weren't compatible. At the end of the day. I mean, that happens. He thought of his relationship is what I thought. It was, like, not linking in the time. You know, and I just, you know, I went to Spain and I filmed a really amazing feature movie for Lust. Um, and while I was there, it just gave me like time away from everybody. I think that's where also my old job started to fall. But just being like people were expecting so much of me that I couldn't return and it wasn't making me happy. You know, so having that time away, just being like, guys, like I'm going away to do this for me. And then like nobody respecting that space and time. Like, I'm literally on a feature set for 12 hours a day. I do not have my phone. And just, like, the constant just messages from work, from friend, friends, just blowing me off the whole time. I was just like, I was like, don't you want this for me? Like, you said you wanted this. And just not getting that really gave me, like, a time of, like, reflection and distance to see, like, I'm not happy where I am. Um, and so ultimately, yes, it was my decision to terminate all of those contracts, relationships, whatever. You know, and, you know, maybe a little bit of self-sabotage here and there. Hey, but, we all do it. Yeah, but it was just like, hey, this isn't working for me. And so, yeah, if I can make it my fault, I will, because that's the easy, it is an easy ride out. Let me just fuck up. And so you guys will, like, have a reason to do whatever, you know. Um, and, yeah, it wasn't the most graceful exit out of all of those situations. But, you know, you do what you can. And right now, when you're like, oh, you know, have fun. I'm just trying to pick up the pieces of my life together, Matt. Are you happy now, though? Getting there. Getting cool. There. I, I'm a lot happier. It is a little stressful, you know, getting fired and hired and fired and hired and yes, no, yes, no. But it's more just focusing on, like, well, what will make me happy, you know, rather than what can I do to try to save my job, save my relationships, save all these friendships. And some of these things aren't worth fucking saving. Exactly, yeah. And, like, in this moment, I told a lot of people, like, hey, you know, it doesn't mean I hate you. It doesn't mean it's off the table forever. But, like, in this right now... I think that I just need to be by myself. Well, also, good <laughs> on you at 24 that you can recognize that shit. Because 
especially like not saying you're young, but at, at least earlier in life for me, it is hard to like walk away with some of those relationships that have history behind them. Of course. Just for my own fucking like, you know, well being. Cause it's like, but I've known this motherfucker forever. Like, exactly. And like, I think that was my trouble with this one and the past one, which is also another three years. Cause like, I started porn when I was 18. You know, so I've been through this and like having someone there because, you know, por porn runs you through, you know, no doubt about it. You know, you have all these external thoughts, internal thoughts, like I'm doing this, but it's this, but it's that. So, yes, having someone to go home to is very nice and is very comforting. And just having people there that aren't in the industry who understand that can be very, you know, grounding. But at the end of the day, like I have to look at what they need to and who they are. You know, and realizing that something isn't serving both of us. You know, no matter how much this person says that they can fix it now, or how much I think I can fix it, like, there's both problems that we have to work on internally. So that's why I'm like, I'm not looking to jump into another room because I know I have a lot of shit in here and here that I need to fix. Cancer. I got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dying mad. <laughs> Before I can like, I, I'm I, I'm sorry, Jade. My my yeah, my CPU. You my CPU. Interrupting me. I'm like trying to have a nice heartfelt conversation here. Uh, I know. I, I I'm the asshole. And he's just in here. Fucking cancer. You have cancer. Sorry. Sorry. Never mind, Matt. You know. <laughs> Never mind. Trying to like you know get in touch with myself and like show people who I really am, and you just interrupt me like everybody else. Yep. That's right. I'm all right. So, just, you know, call 911 while I go blow my brains out. Wow, that, that actually, that line right there is going to get me demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. Heard I did not tell him to kill him now. Like, that was out of his own mouth. So, I am not responsible if one day he kills himself. Okay. Oh, I'm way too self centered for that. <laughs> No, I told everyone, I'm like, there's no other way of dying besides, like, if I choose to die. Like, no one else gets the gratitude of killing me. No one else gets that. Cancer doesn't? No. I'll kill myself before cancer kills me. <laughs> Just full on Hunter S. Thompson, that shit? Yeah. Exactly. Three cuts? Yeah, I'm not. Who's your second to decapitate you afterwards? Nobody. I'm going to do it right. It's no one else gets the gratification of killing me, Matt. All right. That's when you know you found true love when you're like, you can kill me. Yeah, no. That's still where my God complex secedes everything. Like, no, like, no matter how great I think you are, you still don't get to go around being like, I killed GJ Kush. No, fuck that. I mean, most people shouldn't brag about that. That's how you end up in jail. Yeah, but even so, even for their own ego shit, because we know that's what everyone's on here. Nobody gets that gratification. Whoa, in LA, people are on ego shit? Never. No. No way. Really? Let me. As Jade is running away from the microphone. Just running away from the fucking microphone. <laughs> she apparently needs a fix of something. Like, yeah. I thought I had my other vape, but I don't. <laughs> I'm just like, good podcasting. Oh, oh wait. God, Ten feet away from the microphone. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have to stay here for the asthma. <sighs> and the cancer. <laughs> so what do you think happens when we die? I don't know. That's not my decision. I mean, it's got to happen. Yeah, but I don't know. What do I look like, Matt? An intelligent. I'm God doesn't mean I know what happens when you die. I feel like that's up to every individual. Well, it was a theory. I'm asking for your theory. Yeah, so I'm saying it's up to every individual. So individually, what do you think happens when you die? I transcend. To? Duh, to a more higher godly state. If you're stuck in your low vibrations, then yeah, you get reincarnated some shit. <laughs> That's how reincarnation works. Is that truly your belief? or? I don't know. I don't think about it. I, I'm 24. I'm immortal. Obviously. God, I miss that. I miss being in my early 20s and to be like, I'm immortal. <laughs> when you get to your 40s, everything fucking hurts. And you're like, I'm going to die any second now. Yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> you're like, you're like, I, you're like I got nothing for that. that that's I, 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 fucking horrible. I'm not in my 40s. How am I supposed to say that, Matt? Sometimes I wake up and I feel like I am, but it's also because everyone else acts like they aren't in their 20s. 
Damn. Oh, no, no. Mentally, mentally, I still think I'm in my 20s. My body fucking tells me otherwise often. Okay. Tokyo, like, I walked more than I have in a, quite some time, and my legs are like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What do you mean you're walking 10 miles today? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. My legs are like, uh. Yeah, I think that's the thing about LA, because, like, you don't walk here. Like, in Chicago, when I live in Chicago. 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 I live in Chicago. I used to walk everywhere. I used to take the train everywhere. I didn't have a car there. I moved here. I was trying to do that. And nope, I bought a car like a like couple months after. I yeah, you can take the L places as long as you're in the right parts of town. Yeah. Well, one time I did. And you know how Chicago has, um, they put 5G underground in the red line, the blue line. Oh, that's, here, see, that's way past my time. I've been gone. Here, here they didn't. So I'm like trying to go downtown to go to my dentist. And like, uh, yeah, I lose all my service. And so I'm like, I don't know where to get off. I don't know where to get off. I don't know where to get off. So I get off. I get off a stop early, which is pretty lucky. But yeah, then I have to haul ass to my dentist. Luckily, there's only like 20 stops in the whole fucking LA metro system. Yeah, but I didn't know where to get Like I was counting on like the thing to tell me, like get off here. And yeah, well, I got on and my music cut. Because I was on Wi-Fi, I was streaming on Spotify, and I was like, well, this sucks. And then I was like, I don't know where I'm going anymore. I don't know where to get off. Yeah, I had no idea that Chicago would, like, put cell signals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the red line and the blue light now have uh, 5G underground. Yeah, it's been almost five years since the last time oh. I was back. Then why do you have a venture card on your floor? Because that's from the last time I was there. Five years ago. Yeah. 2018 was the last time I was in Chicago. So you have stuff on your floor from 2018. It was in my leather jacket, and I took it out because I didn't need to bring that to Japan with me. I see. Hey, you were living in L.A. five years ago, so... Yeah, I don't have my venture card on my floor, though. Well, I don't anymore either. Yeah, because I... <laughs> Anyways, yeah, L.A. Transit sucks. One of the worst in the nations. Yes. Nations. I've been drinking. What's crazy is, if for the audience who doesn't realize it, the plot of Who Framed Roger Rabbit is Chinatown for children. You're like, I have no idea what... I don't know what you're talking about. Well, seeing as you don't like film, so... I don't like film, so why would I watch a film? Why are you trying to... Sorry, I like film. I'm yeah, sorry. but this podcast is about me, not about what you like. It's true. Yeah. I'm sorry. So you keep I'm just going to walk away from that tangent. I'm just going to walk away. The point I was trying to make was LA actually at one point had a very robust public transit system. Okay. And between AAA, Firestone and GM, they took it out of service. I don't what I'm not a historian either. I don't know. Obviously, you're not a doctor, not a historian. I'm not. I'm a fucking porn girl, obviously, Matt. Like, look at me. Like, what do you think that I know? I need more I need more vocal fry in your voice for that. It's a little more like, um, what is a movie? <laughs> Can you explain a movie to me? We're in L.A. right now, really? Maybe if, I can If I ever have to explain what a movie is to a fucking porn girl, like... I'm just going to be like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm fucking done. Like, your profession is to be in movies. Really? I didn't know that. I thought I just had to be hot on camera. We're making a movie there, Matt? Should I tell my mom I'm a movie star now? You should. Okay. I will. I'm sure she'll be really proud of me. I I'm will. sure she will, too. I'm sure she will, too. I know. I'm going to send her this whole podcast, and she'll be like, wow, what a star. Just let me know where to send it. I'll send her the unedited one. All the chlamydia jokes. All the chlamydia. No. My mom's great. I don't I don't know if she'd understand all my jokes, but she's cool. I'd hope so. Like she, <laughs> she's a young know, producing all right daughter, so <laughs> whether she wants it or not, I'm here. Now I am. <laughs> Can't do abortions after twenty four years. <laughs> twenty four, Matt. I said twenty four. I said twenty three. I said twenty four. Rewind it back. 23. I said 24. You said 23. You want to bet on this, Matt? By the time you see it in post? Yeah, I have no, said 24. No, no, editor. Note to editor. For me. You mean me? You're not. You're the editor for your own show. Yes. No, you have to put 23. You said it. Nope. Don't take it. Got it. 
Yes, I edit my own fucking shit. Do you yeah. see a fucking, fucking PA running around here? He edits his own shit because he knows he fucks up all the time. And so he has to be there editing. It. Otherwise, the editor would listen to me and say, yeah, show when he said 23. Because he did. You really think that I have that much ego like where I have to like you know, be right? I don't give a fuck. If I, if I in post, if it's like, oh, I said 23, I said 23. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you just said that you're going to edit it so there'll be no 23 in there. Don't know yeah, just to fuck with you. Just to fuck with you. Wow, you're so mean. Aw. You need another cocktail? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because you keep on being mean to me. We're going to pause yet again to get Jade another cocktail. We made Jade. You got another cocktail. We'll see how this one ranks. Ranks. ASMR. <laughs> This one's good. It's like the last one. Oh, yeah. It's okay, man, I guess. It passes. <sighs> Just negging me on my own show. Just negging me. See how it is. It's my show tonight. All right. Well, then you edit it. Okay. <laughs> and it'll say 23. I have chlamydia. Put the Tylenol up your asshole. <laughs> Before we got back on, she's like, yeah, Nathan Bronson said I was one of the most entertaining guests. And I was unique. like. It was like a unique show experience because obviously I'm special, man. See, I thought you were like, oh, Nathan gave you a heads up that this was a fun Hi, show. Nathan. Yeah. Luckily, you don't, you don't get to experience what Nathan experienced last time he was on here. What did Nathan experience? This fucking set fell on him. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, in VR, the camera falls on him sometimes, so he's used to that. It's okay. Yeah, yeah the, the curtain just fell on me. <laughs> I, I think things just like to fall on... <laughs> it, just... Hey, you want to hear one funny story about Nathan? Of course. Hey, Nathan, you ready for this one? So, we did a... V... <laughs> yeah, you're going to... So, we were doing a, a VR gangbang scene, and Nathan was underneath the camera, and there were two other guys there. And so, they had to come first... And the girl was riding Nathan. She had her mouth open. And you know where the cum went? All of it went in her mouth. <laughs> Except one drop. He got some other dude's cum on him. And then he came on his own eye, which is the VR's eye. So I'm kind of excited to watch that one. What a professional. I know. No, he was amazing. Nathan, like, he was there. I have a funny picture. He was looking there. He's sitting there with his hands like this. Like, it's an amazing professional. Thank you, Nathan, for getting through that because most people I know would not. We had one gangbang where the guys started fighting with each other. For no reason. No one even came on each other. They just started fighting for no reason. Well, what happened? I don't know. Like, well, I, I, I literally do not know. I guess. Like, was this a fist fight or? It was going to be. I mean, we sent one of the guys home because he was just like, he just kept coming to me and be like, oh, bro, is over here. It's like, boo, 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 saying this, this, this to me. And I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I just want to tell you. I'm like, they just kept going out like under their breath, I guess. So then Nathan come, came, came on by another dude and just still keep his school. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah. Like, yeah. True professional. But yeah, you used to, you used to having things, I guess, come on. <laughs> this, this is one of those things why I've never wanted to be a male talent. It's a difficult thing. I mean, it's definitely like shooting multiple, shooting multiple guys. It's definitely. Definitely easier than shooting multiple girls. Why is that? I don't know. Because I can yell at the guys. And I can't yell at the girls. Because <laughs> they'll cry. Yeah. Because I can be like, yo. Go in there. And they're all just like sitting on the floor. And I'm like, we need your penises right now. And, you know, if I'm, you know, trying to wrangle girls, they're just everywhere on their phone, smoking, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, oh, my God. guys, Come on. Get it together. But, like, honestly, like, they want to do, you know, like, we're getting bigger and bigger VR Girl scenes tomorrow. I'm shooting a nine girl VR scene. That's what I need help with. Nine girls. Nine, nine girls, one guy VR. I'm booking one for later this month. 16 girls. Our one nominee this year is 15. Like, did they just take turns? Like, what yeah, happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not even like an orgy. It's just like literally everyone's just like taking turns on one penis. I, I don't know. I feel like at about, like, like for me, I can't do orgies because, like, it's just overwhelming. Like, even in my personal, like, it just gets overwhelming. There's too much going on. And I, like, get, like. Where do my hands go? I know. I'm like, ah! like, 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 at some points, I'll just be, like, in, like, the corner by myself and be like, okay, that's enough for me. I'm going to leave. 
Like, it just gets too, like, overstimulating. Like, what was the last time you were in an orgy in real life? I don't know. I don't, rem- I don't remember anything, Matt. But even for work, it's just, like, there's too much going on. So I've tried to tell them that. I'm just like, bro, we don't need all these girls. Like, we don't need them. We don't need them. We can, like, cap out at, like, three girls, and it'll be the same effect. Except you can't put all the names on the box cover if you don't have all 19. You can't, yeah. So, like, that scene better win AVN, and they better fucking be giving AVN trophies to every single one of those girls. And me, because I wrangled all of them. Yeah, no trophy for production folks except for director. No, I no, I told my director that. I said, Nash, I better get a fucking trophy for this. Would you rather get a trophy for that or for your own performance? For my own performance, but since I haven't performed in so long, I don't know. We'll get back to work. Go set up. He just get a trophy. Then I have to, like, hire PR and pay for that award. Well, I mean. (laughs) Did I say too much, Matt? No, no. (laughs) Like, I'm not, like, shilling for AVN or XBiz, so. It just seems like, you know, you have to do a lot for the right companies. And the right companies have to like you. And the right companies have to push your scenes. And then you got to hire a PR person to push your scenes, too. And it's just like, you know. Yeah, but you're friends with a PR person who would probably push you for very limited or very like reasonable prices. I know. It's just like I don't know. Maybe eventually, maybe one day. I mean, yes, I would like to have a trophy that has my name on it. But the amount that goes into it and like the amount of rigging and just bullshit that goes behind it. Like I don't want to put it that much up front, you know, for it. Like I'd want to win it because people actually think that it's good. I don't want to win it cuz I pay someone off to give it to me, you know. Well, it's got to be a little of both. Like like, no one's going to let a scene that is absolute dog shit fucking win, no matter how much you pay. Yeah, I know. But, like, if I do a good scene, I don't know. I'm, I'm still, like, on the fence about everything. What, do you don't think you do good scenes? I do amazing scenes, but they haven't ever been nominated. Well, you haven't gotten, like, I've gone and done a scene in a while, so you need to get back on the saddle. I'm working on it. How are you working on it? That's um, some confidential information right now. How so? Because it's in pre-production still, so it's confidential information right now. When it comes out, I'll come back on here and tell you all about it, Matt. All right, all right. That's a way to get yourself booked again. Yeah. <laughs> no. You're not like talking to me, Matt. You don't want to ever have me back on your show. I'm never going to speak to you again. I'm going to see you at parties and be like, why? Why did I do this? Why did I bump someone else to have you on tonight? I'm sorry, other person he bumped. Matt should get better, like, with his scheduling, I think. Right? I think it's his fault. Oh, no, it's totally my fault. Because he can't keep his schedule straight. It's not that he didn't want to have you. He just, like, overbooks his time and doesn't think about anybody else's schedules. That's accurate. (laughs) For the audience. For the audience. What happened was... Met Jada Party like a month ago. It was like a fucking month ago at this point. Was it a month ago? Yeah, about that. It was definitely weeks ago. We booked this for tonight. And then while I was in Japan, there was a production hold called. So I'm like, yo, why y'all bitches ain't fucking nobody? <laughs> wow, you're calling them bitches, Matt? That's why nobody wants to be on your show because you call it fucking bitches. You hear that, everybody? Oh, you bitches ain't fucking nobody. You can be on my podcast. You're here. Because I'm not fucking nobody otherwise. <laughs> While the production hold was on. Well, the, we'll do this formally. While the production hold was on. Moratorium. The moratorium. <laughs> called by the Free Speech Coalition. And my geek. <laughs> and, and my geek, which is actually more important. <laughs> I put a call out to like, yo, I know no one's like doing scenes. If you have time, come do the show. A very nice performer who I've wanted to have on for quite some time hit me up. I'm like, hey, let's, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, awesome. I looked at my calendar. And this is being recorded on December 12th. Because I was in Japan, which is 17 hours ahead. In my calendar, it showed this was booked for the 13th. Oh, Matt, maybe you should like take that into account when you're traveling. I will in the future. Yeah. In the future. That's what I did when I was in Spain. I had to take that into account. Oh, I'm messaging everyone. 
Still, people were messaging me at my time and not their time. Everyone knew my time. They were like, let me bother Jade right here. Hey, I wasn't, like, expecting people to respond to me when I was posting shit at fucking, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. That's when they're up now. Well, I know. Because drugs. Yeah. What? I didn't say that. No, you did not. You said that. It was just implied. <laughs> just implied, Jade. Your stage name is Jade Cush. drugs? Your stage name is Jade Cush. Come on. <laughs> I don't smoke weed anymore. Really? Why? Because I would get too high. California weed. I call California weed GMO weed. I stopped smoking like two, three years ago. Like I couldn't handle it. Man. How does it feel like be stuck with a station that is like marijuana related? It's annoying. <laughs> I go around at parties and people be trying to like give me everything. Like I was at a party the other day and everyone was giving me like these blunts and purels and all this fancy stuff and they're like, "Oh, she could." Blah, blah. I'm like, I don't smoke anymore. But like I can't rebrand at this point. It's just it's too much. It's right. Like, it's done. You're done. Fuck. I'm just stuck with it. It's a cautionary tale. Think long and hard about your porn name. It was my cam name because on cam. I, yeah, but that's still your porn name. Yeah. I mean, I didn't. I also didn't think that California would be pumping their shit full of GMOs and making it not weed anymore. Like if you grow weed in your backyard, yeah, I'll smoke that shit. I'm not going to, you know, be smoking stuff that's like growing in like elaborate. Oh, it's this percent. Yeah, there's THC, botanists involved. This percent like THC and sativa and indigo. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, if you do it like this. Is it? I'm like, no, like it's a fucking plant. Let it be a plant. No, botanists. Botanists are in that shit. They're genetically modifying. No. And that's why I can't do it anymore. Like, if it was just, like, weed, weed, I could smoke that. If it's, like, weird weed, not going to smoke that. Well, it does too much, like, in here, Matt. Well, that's the thing. I the non-modified the non -modified weed is the weird weed these days. Do you not have your fucking ringer off? Oh. Turn it back on. Dave wants me to call him. But anyway, um, yeah. So, I stopped... I stopped doing weed because, like, I used to take edibles to go to sleep. And then I started getting sleep paralysis <laughs> from taking edibles. So I was like, nope, <laughs> we're just not going to do any of this anymore. So you're just going to drink Midori Sours. I should actually make myself one of those before the night's over because, like, I have no idea what that tastes like. You don't? No. You've never drinking a Midori Sour? No. Why not? Never been inclined to. Well, maybe you should. I've been like getting all my friends to drink like when wherever we're out and I get one, people are like, oh, like, what is that? Well, I, luckily I, I have like more than half a bottle of Midori left. And like, I, I brought one to Nathan and he has one sitting out of the He's like, I don't drink that. I'm like, well, it'll be here for next time then. Well, Nathan's not drinking last I checked. Last time he did this, I mean, it's been, Jesus, yeah. I got to text him because it's been like a year since he's been on oh, here. Yeah. No, um, when we did the cooking show, we were both drinking, and I tried to make him one. He was like, no, I just want to drink. He just poured, like, straight like <laughs> But. All right, well, I'm glad he's back to drinking, because, like. <laughs> so I can have him on my show again and get him drunk. Right? Yeah. No, no. Nathan's great. Oh, no. I, Nathan's been on the show multiple times. Like, always happy to have Nathan on. Like, I need to harass him to come do the show again. Can you have multiple people on your show at once? I mean, yes, it's my show. Yeah, but, like. How many, like, would everyone have to be sitting around the same microphone and, like, yelling? No. It? no. I, I have multiple have microphones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Professional. Ooh. Next time I'm going to bring my little. <laughs> Your little cat ears, bring a friend. Yeah. I'm going to bring everybody, Matt. I'm going to be like, yeah, we are. I'm going to bring everybody, and it'll be <laughs> fucking chaos and hilarious. <laughs> and you have to make everybody Midori Towers. <laughs> yeah, that that may not happen. Why not? It'll that, be really fun. That sounds like a lot more work than I'm willing to put in. Well, I don't care. It'll be really fun. It'll be the best show ever. I promise. I doubt that. <sighs> then again, if you press me and be like, Matt, what was the best show ever? I'm like, I honestly couldn't tell you what the best show of this podcast this was. This show is the best show ever. That's a clip. It is. Obviously. Obviously. That's why I did it, Matt. For the clip. Not not your own ego. Uh, oh, no. No. I mean, it feeds my own ego if this is the best clip. If this is the best show. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, I'm only performing for the camera, so it can be the best. Not It's not for you, Matt. What are you getting out of this? Entertainment. I do this for the lols. Come on. Lulls. Obviously, I, I do this because I am wildly jaded and bored out of my mind. and That's why I put in hours of work into this every fucking week. All right, Matt. I'll be like, I'm bringing all these people on your show, and it's going to be the best show ever. Sounds so much post-production work. 
But it's going to be really funny. It's going to be great. It's going to be great, okay? We're going to do it. I'm not sure I should trust someone who doesn't even know what they do for fun. I'm a professional booker for a living, so I know how to book people. You I know how to book that shit done. You know how to book people to, for going to fuck on film, not necessarily be funny on camera. I'm gonna book my friends because they're funny. Who who'd you book? Who's the dream team? Well, since Nathan's drinking, we can book him. We can book Delilah Day. <laughs> we'll book CJ. And they'll just all go at it and it'll be fucking hilarious. Maybe a couple other people that I'm still in the works with, but it'll be great. Promise. That's like fucking seven people. Like that's a little much. That's not seven. I just named three. Me, you, and other people. So that's yeah. five named and possibly a couple more. It'll be really fun, Matt. It'll be really fun. Okay. It'll be your New Year's show. It'll be like, this is what we're doing. I need to do this somewhere besides my apartment. Okay, we can do it at my apartment then. Fuck. Oh, cool. I can drag all my gear to the fucking the valley. Yeah, see? So, okay, we'll do it at your apartment then, because you don't want to move your gear. You have to pack it up in my car. At least I have parking at my house, Matt. You live in the valley. That's not anything to brag about. Yeah, they all live near my house. So they can go to my house. Well, I, I know where one of them lives. Which one? Nathan. Oh. I've been to Nathan's place a couple times. I will still give him a little shit that I haven't been on his cooking show yet. So we should just all crash this cooking show and your show is what you're saying. <laughs> we should definitely. Last time I talked to him about me doing the cooking show was like we wanted to get something that like had a fucking full on face. What do you mean? Like a pig's head or some shit. Uh, yeah. Well, we were supposed to. So he got this new um, him and his lady got like a, a blowtorch, like a flamethrower thing. So we were supposed to do a steak because he called me the night before. He's like, hey, you know, because the production holds you want to do this. I was like, hey, I guess. And he's like, what do you want to do? And so we're going to do that. We're going to flame cook a steak from a flamethrower. But I guess when you do that, it loses its flavor. And so we ended up making, we made some crab rangoons and we made a sushi bake. Sounds good. It was really good. It's really good. And I just got fired. So I was like, they're just like trying to keep it together. The whole show. <laughs> That'll be an interesting one to watch. You're going to go, do you watch your own content? I don't watch my own porn, but like. Maybe. Other stuff? I Maybe I'll watch that. Like, I'll, I want to see what he included in it because that was live and then it was cut. So if something's cut, I guess I want to see the theatrical edit of it. Um, But yeah. You're like, I'm not watching this. <laughs> not ever. No, man. Why would you think I'd want to watch this? I, I just assumed you wouldn't, actually. I'll watch, like, whatever little, like, clips you post on Instagram. I'll be like, oh, I guess I want to be tagged in this. You will be. Oh. You you fucking will be. Don't worry. I'm going to tag me, and I'll have to approve the tag to show it on my profile, so you better not embarrass me, Matt. Otherwise it won't be tagged on my profile. That's fine. You'll still be tagged. It no. just won't be a collaborator. <laughs> oh, I don't do collaborator ones. Oh, well, good to know. Then I won't <laughs> mark you as a collaborator on... Is it? Yeah, I don't. I don't really use Instagram anymore. You, you're lying to me on that. Like I see posts from you all the time. I just started posting it, but if you if you look back, I only post like once every few months. Like I've had the same like, Instagram. I've never been deleted because I don't use Instagram. Well, guess what? <laughs> We're here to help. Don't delete me. I've had the same Instagram for like five years, Matt. Literally, and like yeah, I have like eighty posts because like. A I'll post like once every few months. And like recently I tried to like up it again to be more relevant. But I've fallen off again because like who can produce that much content? I can't produce that much content. I don't have time to take that many selfies, Matt. So I take pictures of other things. Yeah, but like that doesn't get like attention. It does. No, it doesn't. It makes people not want to look at your account because they're like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. People aren't coming to my account for my tits. Yeah, but for me they are like... One time I was like, I guess posting too many pictures of my fucking cat. And some people were messaging me. They were like, we don't care about your cat. We want to see you. And I was like, okay, fine. You get nothing then. Yeah. See, that's the big difference. People are not coming to my account for my tits. They're coming to my account. For my tits. I mean, hell, people may be coming to my account for your tits, but they're not coming to my account for my tits. <sighs> Should have brought my cat. Well, I'm happy you didn't. What? Because then I have to clip cat hair. My cat's amazing. It's Mr. Sparkles. His name was Jack. Mr. Sparkles. It's 
He's whatever you want him to be. <laughs> He's a very nice cat, Matt. Look at him. I'll, 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 aw, aw. He's on the lock screen. Yeah. For the audio audience, he's on the lock screen. And some other cat is on the lock That's screen. That's my old cat. But do you... Wait a minute, did he kill the other cat? I made that edit myself, Matt. No, I've never seen either one of those cats in my life. No, I meant like the, the setting. You don't recognize that picture? No. No. It's the, it's the Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you don't see it now? You don't recognize it? I'm not that old. <sighs> show it to you so it makes sense. She's trying to show me Pink Floyd now. I am. I saw David Gilmore live in concert. See, you do do things for fun. Oh, my God. Like years ago, but yeah, I did. Like years ago, I had fun. Years. Years and years ago. Aw. Yeah. Um, yeah, my friend invited me. I, yeah, I didn't do it. He was like, yeah, you want to come to this? And I was like, oh, yeah, I do. So you only have fun when people invite you to fun. Yeah. I mean, because I'm fun on my own, Matt. Duh. Other people want to add fun. They can. I'll take your word for it. I will take you. You're going to make me go on record about this shit, aren't you? Yeah. You're gonna... Jade, you are fun. That didn't come out right. <laughs> Jade, you're fun. He doesn't think I'm fun. Nope. I booked you because you're not fun. I bumped someone else from tonight's podcast because you're not fun. No, you bumped someone else because you double booked and that was your own fault. I mean, yes, that is accurate. But I could have been like, oh, no, we're on the 13th. And then I could have been like, no, Matt, I'm busy the 13th. I'm shooting a nine-girl harem that day. I cannot make it to Hollywood at 7 p.m. That's correct. I could have booked the other person who has now been pushed to January for you. January. Yeah. The other person got pushed to January because of you. you for you. Are you booked that far in advance, Matt? I actually am. Oh, no. So my surprise shit show podcast can't happen. Uh, I mean, it really could. Like I, We're, we're just going to show up at your house, Matt, and we're going to be like, we're outside, and you have to let us in. You better plan ahead. I may not be home. I do things for fun. No. No? No. This is obviously the fun. So if I say, Matt, we're here right now. I don't believe that you're going to like put that much effort into it. I will. I will text them all right now. I am a professional booker. <laughs> I do. Bookers, I am pre-production here. I say, Matt, this is the, we need uh, some baby wipes and some Red Bulls and some alcohol. <laughs> like, <laughs> Matt, sorry, we're just coming to, we're, and now we drink this extravaganza. Like, <sighs> we need call sheets right now. Give me all the information so I can send everybody's call sheet. Do I got to deal with people's egos on like them being number one or two on the call sheet? Huh? A mainstream call sheets, like the, you know, they're ranked by importance. On oh, no. I just put them based on their, like, if I have, Nine girls come in, and three of them are from the same agency. I put them at the top because I can just send that out like that. Yeah, no, it was, it was. A or also, whoever's like, if I know someone doesn't like being on set, or I don't know someone, I'll put them at the end. But if I know someone and I can talk to them, chill with them, I'll put them at the beginning. I'll be like, hey, if you're on set, I'm just gonna be sitting here talking to you. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a random. It's just random. Like I don't know any of y'all. Y'all just come at random time. I don't know. And we see the method to the madness. There's no method at all to any of this madness. Nobody knows what's going on ever in anything. And that is the truth. Nobody well, knows. yeah. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I do. I'm like, hey, if I know someone, yeah, they show up first because I just get, I'm just going to talk to them the whole time. And they won't be mad that they're sitting around, hopefully. Do you ever worry that they will be? Yeah, but that's also not my problem. You sign up for this. Oh, look at you being self-conscious. If somebody takes a booking for like a 9 to 15 girl shoot, you know that it's going to be a long day regardless. And if you want to get mad at me, even a multi-girl scene, if it's like a group scene, it's not going to be in and out. If it's a VR scene, you're not going to be in and out. And like, if you're on my set complaining about that, I'm like, dude, you shouldn't have taken this booking then. And that's all I have to say. Like, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I can't do anything. Like, just production in general. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it sucks. Does indeed. 
And you just got to deal with it. If you don't want to do it, because those are always outcomes, then don't take your booking. Very true. Don't take the booking. Don't do it. Don't do, if you don't want to do something, don't do it. If you don't want to have something put in your butthole, don't do it. I don't often. Except Tylenol. Gel caps. That has <laughs> never happened. Never happened. She does not believe me. I don't. Why do you not believe me? Why would I lie to you? Because you gave me a script description. I'm not going to get into this. But yeah, <laughs> you don't want to do something, don't do it. Right? I've, I've not done anal in my five years here because I didn't want to do it. Have you done anal in real life? Never. Why not? No. No, I just like, I, I just, it's not my thing. Fair enough. Um, I mean, I've tried it in real life, but it's like just not something I really, like, I don't want to have my butthole like fucked for like for also stage production for that long well no i'm talking talking real life like i understand like there's a plenty of reasons not to do it on film but irl like you're just not into it or i don't know there hasn't been anyone i've been like i just like don't you're with the dude for three years and he just never tried to put it in your butt no i just it's not something that i really because like even knowing everything that goes into it now and set production you carry that over and I'm like, I just like this. Were you worried about pooping on somebody? Yeah, I don't like poop, Matt. What about it? I don't know. Last time someone pooped on my dick, I just went and took a shower. No, I, I just rather. I mean, it washes right off. Yeah, I know. But I just, I, I would just rather not have to deal with that. I mean, you don't have to. It's not your dick. Yeah, but like that dick is around me and then there might. They go to the shower. There might be like poop around. Like, it's just too much. It's too much. As I often say, sometimes when you drill for oil, you strike oil. It's just not my thing. Uh, fair enough. I'm not, I'm not peer pressuring you into that's, having it all suck. That's peer pressuring me to do anal. Oh, we're peers? Aw. Aw, we're peers. Right now <laughs> we are because I'm on your show. Why well, like, the minute I walk out of here, we are not peers. We're not friends anymore, Matt. Fuck you. Oh, that's... Oh, I see the green that pops up on Instagram. The green? Yeah. We're clo- close. Yeah, because I need a fucking PA for tomorrow and you didn't reply to me. I mean, I, I could still get up and do it tomorrow. Jesus. Yeah, well, we already brought our head editor out of fucking the office so we could PA the set. Well, didn't text me. You didn't be like, hey, so man. You could have replied to my close friend story because you're on my close friend story, but you didn't reply I know. to my close I, friend story. You didn't reply at all, Matt. I didn't because I thought I would have other work that I had to do today. <laughs> That's not I didn't want. Problem. I did. That is not my problem. Jade, 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 Matt, Jade, Matt, Jade, 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 Jade. <laughs> I do not care. I don't yeah, care. you would care if. I don't care. Jade, you would That's super. It's personal problem. And that he didn't reach out to me. Jade, really listen. Jade. You would fucking hate me if I had responded, committed, and then been like, my bad, I have another client that I'm under contract to that I have to do. Right? Yeah, but it's still your problem. It's not my problem. It would have been your problem if I had done that to you. Yeah, it would have been. So I decided to keep our relationship healthy and not do that. I said, you'd be like, oh, man, I have another podcast I have to go on right now. Sorry, can't do it. Goodbye. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You got to go do Inside the Industry or something. <laughs> what? What do you have against Inside the Industry, Matt? Nothing at all. Do you not have anything? I, I don't have anything. Okay. It was just the first industry podcast that came to the fucking top of my head. I did that one, like, years ago over COVID. But it wasn't really like a podcast. It wasn't like a, this. It was more just like... I, I, don't, I don't even remember. What I don't remember anything, Matt. I first thought I had short-term memory loss, but now it's more like long-term because I don't remember. I mean, this is why I'm assuming you just say Matt as you start every sentence, just to remind Matt, yourself. Matt, what is his name? Matt? Matt? No, my old roommate's name was Matt. You're like, Hello. generic white boy name. Uh, Matt. There we go. I do know Matt because, yeah, my, my old roommate's name was Matt in Chicago. So that's one name I do remember. Aw. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. I remember you uh, remind you of someone else from Chicago named Matt. Yeah. That's a good thing. I like Matt. Aw. Matt's a good guy. Hi, Matt. If you ever watch this, I'm going to send it to you. Hi, Matt. <laughs> but, Jade, on that note, we're actually going to call last call on this motherfucker. Believe it or not, this has been over two hours. Has it? 
It has. Wow. You're kicking me out, man. I'm not kicking you out. I'm just... kicking me out. Okay, I'll go. I see where my company is not wanted. Before I kick... I'll just... I'll just go. Jade, before I kick you out, please tell them where they can find you on the things. You do. Instagram.com slash JustQueenJade. Twitter.com slash Jade Kush. And then the Roman numeral 13, which is XIII. Wow, look at you educating people. Yeah. I took Latin, so I know Roman numerals. <laughs> um, yeah. And OnlyFans, Kush Queen Jade. But I have a link tree, so I just go to that. Because like, I'm not sitting here reciting every single one of my links. <laughs> I mean, you could. I'm not going to stop you. That gets boring. No one remembers that. They still go to the link tree. They're like, what did she say? <laughs> well, good thing I actually put it in the credits, too. Okay, well, yeah, you can just write it and they can click it. So why am I saying all this shit, Matt? Because it's part of the sign-off. <sighs> part of the routine, Jade. Okay, well, my name is Jade. Goodbye. <laughs> and as always... You can find me at Matt underscore Slayer on Twitter, Matt Slayer on Instagram, Matt F. And Slayer on Facebook, twitch.tv slash Matt F. And Slayer. The Patreon, home to the exclusive content, the uncensored content at patreon.com slash Matt Slayer. You can find the podcast at And Now We Drink on Twitter, And Now We Drink underscore on Instagram. And until next week, drink up, motherfuckers. See, I couldn't understand half of that, so why would I just, like, make a bunch of sounds that people couldn't understand if it's going to be linked there? I don't know. <laughs> Because I was just rushing through my fucking sign up. Okay, I'll, I'll do it fucking slow for you. Oh. As always, you can find me at Matt underscore Slayer on Twitter, Matt Slayer on Instagram, Matt F and Slayer on Facebook. FN? FN, yeah. Twitch.tv slash Matt F and Slayer for the gaming content. The gaming content? Yeah, the gaming content. You can find the exclusive content, the video version a week early, the uncensored version of these podcasts at patreon.com slash Matt Slayer. You can find the podcast at, and now we drink on Twitter, and now we drink underscore on Instagram. And until next week, drink up, motherfuckers. <laughs>